theory and more. What's the situation? And Ryan Kennel. <laughs> and the critical right. drinker. <laughs> and everybody we'll just keep adding to it here. Yeah, and eventually. Yes, uh, story. Yeah. yeah, welcome to the stream, guys. How you doing? We're here with uh, two new gentlemen. Mm. I hope you guys are excited. <laughs> And we're going to talk about uh, Star Trek today. So sweet, lot, lot to discuss, lot to discuss. But uh, yeah, the the gentleman, uh, gentleman to my, I guess would be my right for you guys is Critical Drinker, <laughs> yeah. and then we got of course Ryan. What's up? Returning. Right this Hello, stream. Ryan. And we got Hello, Bruce, Mueller. Uh, Mueller. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice to meet you too. Uh, I haven't seen you around, you know. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been on with Mueller. Here. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, Oh yeah, you're a misogynist. I heard. You know, <laughs> I typically, I just let my work speak for itself. I don't make videos calling myself one. But uh, you know, props to you though. I saw I that. It, it really is yeah. like that whole meme of like first time. <laughs> it's like collecting fucking Pokemon. Yeah. Like I just got Blastoise. It's like oh cool, cool, cool. We've had that yeah. for a while, but that's yeah, yeah. that's that's great. Yeah, I know. I uh, I was telling Mahler last night. He's like he's like welcome to the club. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, basically. The entrance. I was like, oh, nice. The cool. club's getting full, though. It's almost at capacity. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I look around, like, who, wait, who, who isn't in the club? Like, damn. Yeah. Well, it, it kind of got to that point where it's like anyone who criticized Star Wars in any way is in the club. And so that's a lot of people at this point. Mm, so yeah. Ever growing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, we'll see what happens. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about, I, honestly, I don't even know what is going on in the news today. There's no Star Wars real news. So let's just. Well, I don't think you guys have done a goes. star grift since, uh, you know, a big new movie was announced, right? Ooh, oh, true. yeah. The next step. Oh, Mando the... movie. We, right. we, we right, talked right. a little bit about this on Open Bar. <laughs> right. We shared our thoughts. Right. right. Okay. Um, I mean, because that, that's now what the headlines off. are, right? I mean, you started the, off. Yeah. For the first 10 or 11 days of 2024, every headline was about Shermino Bay Chinoy, about her comments, about the movie, as like, people that didn't pay attention eight months prior when all this stuff was out there yeah. anyway. And you finally saw some of the talking heads that aren't as engaged with entertainment, pick it up and make it go viral. Yeah. So then Lucasfilm just happened to decide it was a perfect time to change the narrative, change the headlines and announced, Hey guys, aren't you excited for the Mandalorian and Grogu and Grogu? <laughs> sorry. From, from the same creative <laughs> team that brought you uh, Mandalorian season three, here comes the Mando movie. Woo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. we, we, what was it? you called it? Grongu, the Blandalorian and Grongu. Grugo. On Grongu. Grongu. <laughs> yeah. Grongu. Yeah. Grongu. Grongu. At this point, I mean, who even cares? But like, um, yeah, man, it's uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Big movie announcements like this are traditionally made at things like Star Wars Celebration because that's when they line up all their upcoming slate of uh, releases and they could really build up the hype for it and get a good audience. This really felt like, quick, just get something on social media now. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a Mandalorian movie coming. Okay, sure. That's that's totally uh, believable. What do you think about it? Are you more excited for that or the sh for it to be a show? Uh, excited so excitement. Excitement. Yeah. He's teaming strong with words. excitement. Okay, so yeah. I'll be fair on this one, right? I am... Um, on the meta level, just from the production side of things, it's kind of interesting that they managed to get John Favreau back and that he's doing a movie. And yeah. were it in any other studio, I would say, well, he's got a good chance of producing something halfway decent here. Um, within the context of Disney and the framework that they've created, the environment they've created, uh, I don't think he's got any chance of producing anything good because I think this will be constrained by all of the usual rules that come with like making anything within the Disney umbrella. You know, it's going to have loads of uh, loads of um, nostalgia baiting. It's going to have loads of crappy humor that probably it doesn't need. It's probably going to have a, a strong female companion who's going to be better than better than the uh, Mando at everything. Um, it's going to kill it. And on a purely conceptual, creative level, um, I am so fucking over these two characters. I don't care about the Mandalorian. I never cared about Grongu. Uh, so I'm just going to go with Mogger's name for it now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, man, he was just there to sell merchandise. That's all he was. Uh, he's not a character in the normal sense because he doesn't have a personality. Um, and the Mandalorian is is done. Like, his character arc's done. And he never had much of a personality to begin with. And I don't even think that a movie is a good setting for him. You know, uh, he was at his best... 
And this is why season one of The Mandalorian did as well as it did. Doing episodic adventures, relatively small, low-level, self-contained stuff. But they yeah. finally got their hands on something that was successful uh, and that pleased the fans. And so they tried to ramp it up and expand it and create this big overarching story that just wasn't supported by the, the structure of the show. Um, and they're just going to take that to the nth degree with a movie. They're going right. to try and make it big and epic, and there's going to be like massive confrontations, probably with Thrawn or someone else. And it's just, it's, it's just too much. Um, it, it's not going to work. So yeah, that's my extremely long-winded answer to say no. I'm not that excited let me, about it. Let me let me ask you some. If you were to go and like, let's say they were, like called you up, what would you do to fix it? What would you do to write the story? Like, hey, here, here's freaking twenty million. We want you to do this story, Mando F- movie four, basically. I would say no, thank you. <laughs> I mean, like off the you top of my head, you wouldn't take it somewhere cool, like, like, wh- like, it, where would you want it to go? It would have, it would have to be to get him back to being a bounty hunter, to take yeah. on some bounty that that seems initially pretty easy on the surface, and it leads him to like a bigger, like, organized crime ring or something that he yeah. has to take down. That's like a threat to like some local people. Like, maybe make it to some kind of like seven samurai type thing. Um, I think there's there's plenty of Western influences, or sorry, sure. you know, the Western genre particularly that you could draw on with this kind of thing. Um, yeah. So I would keep it low level, keep make him be a bounty hunter again, make him be a badass again, minimize Grogu. I, I, you, I'd you probably write Grogu. out a bit. Of- you, you kill Grogu. That's what you do. That's yeah. how you fix it. You kill um, Grogu. Absolutely, <laughs> because he, he is kill that little bitch. They're never gonna kill that fucking <laughs> he, 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 <laughs> because yeah. he's so stupid. It, like he's a he, what they have done to him is so retarded because he's overpowered as hell. But only when they happen to need him to be, he knows how to do this when he happens to know how to need to do this. Yeah. He understands everybody when he needs to understand. He's a fifty-year-old baby who. I, <laughs> it's dumb. It's stupid. Kill him. I, I, Get him. I, I, I would, <laughs> kill I, I the would goblins. Want the, I would want the, yeah. Kill him. <laughs> I would want the tone to be serious. I would want this to be a serious adventure. And Grogu just precludes the possibility of that because he's just there to do dumb, goofy, cutesy stuff. And it just ruins it. What's funny Mm. from my POV, like having any thought about what kind of place we would take it, I didn't even entertain Grogu being in it. I was like, no, that's not happening. I was going to say like, it would be cool maybe to enter a world where Mando is now relatively well-known and celebrated. And then he takes on a project that he's overconfident with. And not only like fails it miserably, maybe loses a bit of his tech, gets seriously wounded, but also a lot of people die because he doesn't uphold his end of the uh, exchange sort of thing. And the movie's just about him being humbled a bit, understanding that uh, he's gone way too... His, his fucking life has been insane. He went from being like a nobody bounty hunter to one of the most known and interesting characters in the world, collecting items from all the most famous people in the world. And just now that like he got over in his head and and uh, he you know bring him down a bit, have him go through something that's real difficult instead of fake yeah. difficult, like where he's crouching and those people are shooting at him, and it's all bouncing off, and then someone comes in and says, "I got you, buddy," and then they work together. That sort of stuff. Yeah. Like I'm bored at this point. The like, yeah. remember he got captured at the end of Mando season three, and it meant nothing because they didn't strip him of his armor. They just yeah. left him to yeah. keep all of it. And the Grogu Shit, saved him off. in yeah. a robo suit. Oh, oh, I hate. I hated it. that, dude. That was literally like when um, what was it? Iron Man or no? Hulk was in the Hulk. Was it the Hulkbuster suit? No, not yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Suit, yeah. 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 I'm like, can we just have him like you did in the trailers with actual Hulk? Like this is so stupid. It, it, his why are you literally yeah. putting down his powers to put him in some mechanical machine when Grogu could have probably like? And the, here's the other thing is that. Yoda said, "For what do you say? For eight hundred years, have I trained Jedi? So when he was nine hundred, so that means he was a, a Jedi. He was a Jedi master to hundred in so in old continuity. Yeah. yeah. So then I'm thinking, like, is Grogu about to go through some like Pokemon evolution, like <laughs> into Charmander or something? And within you know, like, the next few years, or like, what's the deal? Because like, there's I, I, no way he becomes a Jedi master in fifty years from now. Well, forty five. They've, they've years written now. they've written themselves into a corner with this character because his entire appeal is predicated on him being cute." Like he baby. can't speak, yeah. he just makes these little baby noises and he does goofy things. The the moment you try and move him on, which they desperately need to do, you're right about that. They would have to like take him to the next like evolutionary step. Make so him he's a teenager. Able to start to... Yeah, yeah, they won't do that though, Go because then he would like immediately him. lose his appeal. He wouldn't be cute anymore, and he would just be another like Yoda character, Yoda light, and they can't do anything with him, so they're stuck with him. This is why I would just get rid of him. I would like either. 
have him go off on another adventure or stick him in a fucking food blender or something. Just get rid of him. They have the chance. They they I separate think... at the end of season two and you have Mando yes. doing his shit for X amount of time and then there's that time where he's in need of someone's help and it's like, you need a Jedi. And it's like, oh, let's go back and see Grogu and he's fucking grown up. It was a different idea at that point. Because <laughs> you're like, starting the show off with the baby is a choice. But you know, like the yeah. um, wolf and cub stories sort of stuff. Like you usually have a... A, a, a kid that can develop, have an arc, bring a spark to the person. It's like it's not like it's impossible with a baby, but like they've they've run it dry. There's nothing else they can do with Grogu and uh, Mando together. They, they, they did it way too fast. They went through this entire story arc way too fast. They rushed through it. the The first season, the first season of Mandalorian, should have been him doing different bounties and accomplishing different missions. That you know, the underbelly of the world here, out in some desert planet here, all all around the galaxy, yeah. all to get more Beskar and to assemble parts yeah. of his armor. Yes. That's yeah. what the whole thing should have been. And yeah. throughout that, you're getting those glimpses, you're getting those flashbacks of him as a kid, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe by the end of Mando season one, then you introduce this new element. It's like, what does he do? Season two could be about them and him trying to decide what to do, you know, rather than rushing through it like they did. But then whatever happens at the end, when you do hold the Mando season two and the whole journey is about getting him back to the Jedi and getting him back to Luke Skywalker. You can't then erase that in yeah. one dog shit episode of Book of Boba Fett seven months later. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That, and that is why to me, when you go back, if you do a rewatch of Mando season two, it's it literally means nothing. It's just jangling keys, a bunch of cameos. Mando happens to run into every important person who's still living in the galaxy in a couple week time period. And the journey that they go on, Mando's like giving up Grogu after getting attached to him. It means nothing. Yeah. So uh, to me, if you're going to do a movie, I think you have to get rid of Grogu in some way. I, I don't know how you do that, but it should just be based on a bounty hunter doing bounty hunter things. And you put him in a position of having to choose between some different moral thing. Hey, I need to take care of these guys, but what about those innocent people? They might get affected. Pretty simple. You've seen that done a million times, yeah. but it needs to get back they, to they that. Did that. They of, did that. They yeah. did that with season two. It was perfect. The exit. Grogu was with Luke. Okay, he's going to go be with Luke for like the next however long. And then all of a sudden in Boba Fett, oh shit, he gets Ubered back. That, and, that's and where that, you can 100% tell where the studio got involved and oh, just said, like, well, we need him back. Yeah, like, he's literally the only piece shit. of merch that sells now. Uh, right. We need to get him back in the show. Right. And it's like, dude, what the... F <laughs> like, how is that two years? Honestly, it, like it, that was a two year gap that he was it, with Luke. And it wasn't. Be, be no, like, it wasn't. Favreau has been completely off the mark with everything when in terms of the timeline, which is scary because him and Dave Floney are the ones constructing this timeline. Dave Floney gives his typical like mush mouth answer. Well, you know, it really just depends on what you think it is. You know, we don't really have any lines dedicated or drawn it's in the timeline yet. Right. Yeah. And where in fa whereas Favreau has said, well, it's somewhere between two years and zero years, basically, yeah. that he was actually with Luke. It is literally. time. We know that. Literally. That that. I, I know. I was I, really I, like I, <clears throat> season three just really shit the bed and it's like completely regressed the story. Like, I feel like season three should have been season two and then season two should have been season three. Like should have swapped places because the way it, it ended in season two was perfect. That was so dope. But man, you get, might disagree, but... It, at no, least I there was like so much story there. So I mean, seeing what's been done with season three, what does that make you feel for the movie? Uh, that they're probably going to get back on track, and they realize like, okay, this was shit. I would so assume. Like, okay, from look. The, uh, the time I've spoken to you, that you believe the season three was rushed, and that the movie will have more prep and purpose. I think so. I think so, and I think that they're going to be like, okay, you know, however many cooks in the kitchen they had with. Three, Favreau's like, look, if I'm going to be on this, I want full control. This is bullshit. You yeah, took yeah, my story and you completely deformed it. So here's, here's the thing that I, and I, I heard, you know, Drinker, you said this too about them getting Favreau back. Favreau was already on board with season four. Like he had already written all the season four scripts before the writer's strike. And it was during the strike that they apparently, from some of the reports coming out, that they decided to be like, hey, let's just go and do a movie. So the idea that Favreau was ever out of the door or anything, it's just, I think a lot of that is just bullshit um, yeah. from people that are trying to spin a narrative. Um, the, he was always going to do Mando season four. Yeah. The question is, what is this movie? 
And that's something that I don't even know if Lucasfilm understands yet. Is this movie I don't think they season four, you know, rewritten as a movie? Is the one rumor that's out there that'd no. be like the worst of the worst is there's a rumor out there that they're going to do six episodes of season four and then they're going to release the movie as like episode seven and eight culminating Ooh. event. That would be the worst thing they no, could possibly I don't think do. No. There's no way. There's no way. I think season four is going to be... Uh... Essentially, now they're they're literally in the end game. So if you look at it like this, how I see it is they're they're they started out here with all of the shows, and now it's all converging into one thing. So season four is like up here, and they got to really propel this story to the the focal point, the point of the whole thing. So they have to do that with Mando. Then they got to do it with Ahsoka season two, and then they got to do it with wh- Dave Filoni's what? movie. Well, Skeleton Crew or whatever. Oh fuck, Skeleton Crew. Well, is and, is it how dare you? Is it all going to converge on Thrawn then? Yes, in Filoni's movie. What I'm hoping not, because look, if Thrawn is not really that big, I, I was never that crazy about. Th- he's like, okay, he's smart and really intelligent, but the way they've made him in the show, was like, <laughs> like, yeah, not in the show, like he a is. fucking idiot, and like not imposing at all. Like Spock would shit on this guy easily, and I feel like now that we have the whole Peridia thing with um, what you call it, Balin Skull and Mortis and all that, and the father and this. There is something that could be done there where we have an overarching villain, like someone who's even like at the top, top, beyond the force. So that to me is like super interesting. All right, cool, we can get into that. But with Thrawn and then, you know, what are they going to do on Dathomir? Who are they going to resurrect? They got all these like zombies and shit. Okay, cool, fine. But there's got to be a bigger plot to this. And I think that resides on Peridia with Balin Skull. And uh, eventually what I believe will happen there is Shin Hattie, Balin, Ahsoka, and Sabine end up coming together. They form a team. Ezra sends a whale, and they hop in the whale's mouth. They go back to the galaxy that we're at. Oh, okay. dude, you're killing me with this. This is what like, I, the thing is. is I think they're, they're probably do. right as well. But yeah, this just... is. What, I think this is what. There's no. Uh... Other, how are they going to get out of there? And then he's going to talk to the whales. Be like, oh, and then send them there, and then they're going to hop in the mouth. Probably Ahsoka and Anakin will have a scene together because now she's open to it. And then they'll meet up all this time. We've been looking at Thrawn and what he's up to. They probably won't even show Luke for a bit. And then in the end, Luke could show up. Hopefully, get something with him. And then that'll be the end of the show. And then we have the Mando movie, which will probably come out after, I imagine. Season two, what do you think? No, no, no. The Mando, the Mando movie is going to be the first thing to come out. Really? Like, man, the Mando movie is going to come out before Ahsoka season two, at least in my opinion. Okay. Um, and then I think you're going to get Ahsoka season two, and then you're going to get Dave Filoni's movie. Now, if you there, okay. I think there is room for another season of Mandalorian or something in there too at some point if they wanted to. But no, there's got to be that, something else. So, like, screw Skeleton Crew; it's irrelevant pretty much. But there's got to be one more thing than just Mando movie and Ahsoka season two. B- Boba Fett. Season two, like, maybe nobody, is, nobody's just make him, for make him not a bitch. Make him dope. Make him make him freaking cool. You can be like, yeah. I don't want to rule respect anymore. I don't even want to rule. He hops in his freaking slave one. No, we're not calling it the fire spray. It's a slave one. He hops in there and he just jumps to freaking hyperspace. Says, uh, "Fennec, you handle the planet, whatever." And he goes and does his own thing. And then he Fennec, probably goes. I don't he, like talking anymore. Yeah, no, Ryan. Yeah. He probably meets up with Omega. Okay. No, shut up. Dude. <laughs> that is that is the thing. And, and again, like. There's probably some people, obviously a lot of people here probably know, but the, for these guys, they probably don't even know who Omega is because about 10,000 people watch The Bad Batch. Spam one if you know who Omega is. Spam zero if you think she's a zero. Drink like she is. Yeah, but Spam, I was yeah. Gonna, I was Spam two if you don't know who she is. <laughs> no, o- o- Omega, Omega is a female clone who is seems to be Force-sensitive um, that appears in The Bad Batch series. Everybody knows. Well, everybody knows that's the thing. Guy. Like, I think you can guarantee. I, like, if you were to take, if yeah, if you were to do a season two of Book of Boba Fett, if there is a female in the galaxy you can pair him up with, they will do it. They have to. <laughs> yeah. It's right. the rules now. Right. Part of my issue yeah. though was a lot of the speculation, and it's probably how they're designing stories at Lucasfilm. Why is it always character and place, and then character another place, and then place, and then character meets other characters? Barely ever talking about what we're going to put characters through. Or what characters will learn, or where they'll go. It's always like, as it will go as people, not where they'll go as literal locations. I could, like, if someone sold me as like Ahsoka season two, we're gonna see Thrawn's gonna end up on 
Coruscant as it stands right now. And we're going to see Luke is going to get involved with the planet that Ahsoka's still... I was like, you still haven't <laughs> told me on anything. You've just told me where yeah, people what, are going. What, what are the characters doing? Yeah, right. and I think for my, my biggest... Fear, listen, the Ahsoka series was already like the culmination of a bunch of things that I just hate. I hate Dave Filoni's storytelling. I hate the character of Ahsoka. I hate it when they take things from the old expanded universe that they threw in the dumpster and repurpose and bastardize it and do a poorer version of it. I hate all of it. It was like the, the combination of things that I hate the most. So I already was probably not going to like it. For Ahsoka season two, if they're doing Mortis, and there's been a lot of people speculating about Abeloth and a lot of people that have yeah, not and a that. lot of people haven't even read the books, right? Yeah. That are pretending like, oh, Abeloth would be so cool. You don't have any fucking idea what you're talking about. You just read a Wikipedia article. <laughs> but um, if, if they were to do that, and then like Ahsoka's leading all of this, then it's just one more thing that they've taken away from Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker's entire journey in Fate of the Jedi, you know, learning about Abeloth and finding out how to defeat her and going through this with his son, Ben Skywalker. It's just one more thing they'll rip from the legacy of Luke Skywalker in hand to a woman. So uh, it is what it is. You that woman, of course, is a bastard. I mean, How dare I, you? Because, I, I, I mean, <laughs> theory, you'll probably know more about this than I, but I do get the impression that Dave Filoni desperately wants to make Ahsoka like the center of everything, narrative wise. He's, is he yeah, he, he seems to have times. her just tied into every major event. He's, yeah, she's, so, yeah. she's yeah. been. Killed and reborn, you know, Messiah like. Yeah. And I don't know, man. I don't know if this character is interesting enough to support it. <laughs> no. That's someone who's, uh, <laughs> someone who's just watched a whole season derived around her. You know, but I... we, she's like the only connection we have to, honestly, the only connection we have to George Lucas, like in terms of the original characters, because he created her with Dave in the Clone Wars. So it's like this character is kind of at this point. Well, what's that all, with considering like the, what the sequels did with George's characters? Oh God, nothing. He hated them. He hated those sequels. Like it's it. I know people who literally know him and have like family <clears throat> dinners with him and shit. And that tells like, you he's very fucking, normal. He hates them. <laughs> like, <laughs> he talks about how he was. He wanted to do Episode Seven. So that Disney would have to go into his script and continue on eight and nine, and but he didn't. He's like, and he regrets it. This is what I hear. So, um, I I think that for me, when you look at the character of Ahsoka, even though I was not a fan of her in Clone Wars or whatever, it was very clear. And Filoni has even talked about this: the difference in opinion he and George had. Filoni, I was always in the Ahsoka lives camp. It's no secret that George was in the yeah. Ahsoka dies camp. Yeah. Right, and he's been pretty upfront about that, and I think there's a reason that George wanted her to die, he didn't want her to live through all this stuff. Yeah, he wanted Ahsoka, and I don't agree with the path, but I understand he wanted Ahsoka to be but like show another reason why Anakin Skywalker was inherently distrustful of the Jedi and the way that they ran things because of the way she exited the order, because of her separation, because he felt like betrayed by them. So, you can understand that building up to the reasons why Anakin would be afraid or worried about what the Jedi are and what they mean. So it'd be more easy to manipulate. With that being said, when you decide to keep her alive through that, when you decide to make her so important to everything, when you make her like, when you have her role in revenge of the Sith, like on Mandalore, what we got in clone Wars season seven, I think that all of that <laughs> is just too much. It's way too much. She's more important than she was ever meant to be. And Filoni will never, ever kill her off. He's never, ever no. going to, like, erase her. Be He's no. just going to keep now. on giving her more and more shit. We'll and it's, like, if she died at the end of season two of Ahsoka, we'd all be like, what? Oh. <laughs> what are you doing, Dave? I, I, would, I well, would throw a party. Are you well, kidding me? Did, it's, not, it's not about being happy or sad. It's about being confused as to what Dave is up to. If he killed her, She kind of died like, in the what? first one. So, But it's like it, dying she, is irrelevant at this point. Like she, She's died she, three times. Yeah. Well, like, lightsabers uh, clearly don't kill people anymore, so we can count them out. Uh, Ahsoka Tano has died three times. She died once in the Mortis Arc in Clone Wars. She died in Star Wars Rebels and was saved through time travel in the world between worlds by Ezra Bridger. And then she died again in the Ahsoka series. So I wouldn't be surprised if she died, but you know she's <laughs> going to come back to life. This but that's is, the like... sticky situation. I don't get it. Like, so that she was saved now by the daughter, which is the embodiment of the light. And the daughter died, but the daughter follows her around as an owl. And so she, like a god, I guess. 
I admit that's funny out of context. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> the daughter died yeah. to save her and she follows her around as an owl. <laughs> yeah, me and Drinker yeah, are very course. like disconnected from some of these plot points, okay? <laughs> yeah. I yeah, there's some of it I don't really man. understand. I'm like, how how did <clears throat> how? Like but then does that mean she's like she can she just can't die at all? Ever. Or like was everything in her head where she saw Anakin in the world between worlds? Was she actually there? Or was she she you know, it I'm I don't know. They that world between worlds scene between her and Anakin and all that it, it I said it when it happened. I said, I think it's meant specifically to be completely ambiguous so they don't have to commit one way or the other and literally let the audience make up their own mind, which is... Um, well, doesn't know, the kid hear lightsabers yeah. dueling? So Through it kind of force. implies that it, it is happening. His mom also extent. is it as well. So. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yes. Uh, his yeah. mom, who is not force sensitive, but that doesn't but, matter but anymore. Then, it's also son, able to yeah. hear it. For a second there, I thought they were almost implying if you looked but, over the edge, you'd see Anakin and Ahsoka fight. And you're like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're there in the water. But no, the, the whole that whole sequence just seemed to be predicated on the idea of wouldn't it be cool if Anakin came back and we could get Hayden Christensen back to replay his greatest hits? Yep. That that honestly, narratively, that's all it seems to be because it adds nothing to Ahsoka's character development apart from like her deciding that she wants to be alive instead of dead uh it's not exactly deep stuff no i think it i think it added a ton in the sense where he made her kind of decide that eh, she's being too much gloomy she's being way too gray and she gotta like wake up a little bit be like all right yeah i want to live and she realizes that she i mean I, like I, there was no one else to do it other than him no I personally think, I think that for well, that lesson to be taught 25 years after the fact is <laughs> little little retarded. But hey, sometimes me. sometimes you know you you fall from grace and you gotta get a little wake up call. I guess. See, you know? I would I would buy into that idea if we'd seen more of the conflict with her throughout the show, but we got nothing. She was just a plank of wood. Yeah, that, like there was the no sense itself. of like an inner um, darkness or her struggling between the the light and the dark or anything like that or. Um, having lost her way there was nothing did you watch you know if, if that well i'd have to take your word for it since i haven't seen them okay um, i'm just like, going on the, the movies the, the show season to set that up if that's going to be the Fair major enough. payoff of episode five episodes one through four should give us the context because Fair the enough. ahsoka yeah. that i see in this and as far as i understand in um, rebels and clone wars and stuff she was a much more interesting character here there's nothing if you just ask me to describe her personality based on what i see in this show i got nothing for you uh and so yep. when you want to sit when you want to deliver sure. a big emotional payoff like that a confrontation between her and anakin um about life and death and her like finding the strength to be reborn uh that's a great idea but you've got to give me some setup for it because i got nothing but it's also this show. Um, a topic we haven't really gone over yet uh theory because i think you probably rate that as the best episode of it, right this season mm. No, episode six was the best. Oh, okay. Well, uh, for me, you, episode that is five, right? Where she walks to five is oh, the Anakin. Five one, yeah. is the Anakin. Six was because of uh, Balin and Shin. I thought that was really the most one of the most marvelous episodes. I was just like that scene where he's standing with her, and there's that music, and he was like starting to talk about um, the past and everything. Oh my gosh, like that was just oh, like when you I was know, watching sold. that with my uh, my friends. We were desperate for that scene to continue, and it just cuts off. Yep. I just cut yeah, off. and and I'm like, okay, cool. The idea seven and eight will explain it. No, we don't even get anything with him in in seven or eight. I think a lot of that just came down to Ray Stevenson being a really good actor who delivered fairly like generic lines extremely well. He's like he has a mysterious way of mysterious things with presence. Yeah, pretty well, much. Yeah, and I can only imagine work. what was going through his head was like, oh my god, I've really got to sell this because I got nothing. In all the of our heads are just, just firing off about what he could be referring to, what it all means, and where this could all go. But then you like you watch the scene for what it is. There's barely anything. That's just like, and ugh. then nothing comes after. And so that's why I'm really hoping that I almost feel like these shows are really like a, a what is the word epilogue? Epilogue before prologue is before. Prologue is before. Prologue is yeah. before. So pro, if these are all like a prologue, so season two is going to be hopefully more entertaining. Chapter and or, one and See, or season it, two going to be more one, entertaining. Chapter one, part one, point one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it was Literally. an interesting statement that you made earlier when you talked about them learning their lesson and having yeah. put more development time and thought into, say, the Mandalorian movie uh, yeah. as opposed to their TV shows and so on. Right. And I think to myself, 
I'd, I'd love if that were true, but my worry is that they've had almost 10 years to learn their lesson and they haven't based on what they've actually made so far. And I just wonder, like, is now the time when they're going to turn everything around? Or can they even? Do they have that creative sure, they, ability? Yeah, they can. It's so easy, man. It's just freaking a little bit of PR. That's all they got to do. You just get Kathleen Kennedy, honestly. Is she going to read a freaking teleprompter and be like, hi, everyone. We know that the fandom is quite divided. We love every single one of you all the same. We know we've made some mistakes that you haven't appreciated all in unison, and we'd love to bring you all together. So our next project is going to be blah, 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 whatever. Fucking Ray. There's so many reasons why. <laughs> fucking Reba. They wouldn't have you know, to say but, that. But Chief Among She'll them never be, say that. Like, you know, they would be like, you can't say love all of them. Racist. Oh, you can't say that. Yeah, it's like, true. The Star Wars fandom is not for everyone. And then, according uh, to Obi Wan, according well, to I, I think as well, and that's it's a good what you're describing there is a good way of um, I don't know trying to improve your perception of the studio. But the problem with the brand now is that you've essentially killed off or really ruined all of your legacy characters that the the Star Wars brand was built on. Yep, Luke's Luke's been trashed. Han Solo's dead. Yep. Uh, Leia was a non-entity in the the sequels, and Carrie yep. Fisher's gone now. Um, Boba Fett, like a cool character, pretty small, but like you know, people liked him. Um, he's now he's an old, yeah, yeah. exactly. Funny um, the way you said Han Solo is dead. It's like that's a very nice way to put what they did. To him. Yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they did other and then things. Him, yeah. Yeah. Murdered My point him. being, yeah. like, he, you can't, you can't uh, redeem him now. He's gone. Like that's well, it. Lando Calrissian has sex with robots. Yep. Yeah, I, and so I could go on and on. I mean, I would too if being, I was like, if I was if I was on you know, freaking ship for that long. I mean, whatever. <laughs> yeah. My point being, though, like when you've done all of that, it's going to be very difficult to then uh, get people to like what you're going to m- produce going forwards because for sure. you've essentially yeah. undermined the foundation of your own building. But it's it's not too late. It's there is all you can always fix it no matter what. If Logan Paul came back from his forest stunt i mean star wars can come back from you know it's not that difficult i don't know i don't know if difficult. it's going to come back from a ray movie no yeah it's, it's not it, no and no but that's the thing they keep making shit decisions and yeah, that's the a, issue there's a timeline where they can come back but it's like one of ten thousand million billion timelines where they don't but judging and i think the yeah I mean, we're we're li- doctor literally strange. dr strange yeah. one <laughs> but it doesn't think, happen yeah but I yeah, think as well, the, the more shit things you make, the more difficult that path to redemption becomes. And I, I'm just, uh, yep. my my worry is like they are making more and more shit stuff, and I just I don't see that path getting any easier. You know what's and, funny is if you go back and you watch any of the first six films, you will get a completely different tone to what Star Wars is. It's amazing. It, it's like you you're right back there like i don't think of any of the disney shit or anything like that when i watch the first six films because the tonality is just so different completely by a mile oh, yeah. it's not even the same galaxy so well, it's, 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 it's we easy have to those still so it's like you just have to go back to that and then from there create a new timeline where you just go on tangent with what that was created or what that created Whereas now we're like, you know, in Back to the Future 2, and he's like, we've somehow shifted and broken the timeline. It's like we're now in this weird, funky timeline where we could, I'm holding a Lego piece, where we could go <laughs> in some other, like, we, we could go back to it, and they could create maybe, man, make a really cool Pal- Palpatine movie, honestly. Like yeah, a did- dope-ass Palpatine movie, and talk about legends, talk about, don't talk about the sequels, talk about Plagueis, talk about the Sith that came before Plagueis. There's so much source material to choose from, man. I mean, like Old Republic. You could literally create the coolest new nine films if you wanted to with the Old Republic. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It, it, reality is, if there is this one thing that they could do to, to fix it, at least the best thing they could possibly do, it's one is going on a five-year hiatus, period. Uh, like, bottom line. Where they've done that, that, basically, with movies. <laughs> well, well, I mean, from any, from any content they're putting out. That's okay. the first thing you do. The second we'll thing you do is... is planning, right? Yes, do your timelines, all this stuff. People need a break from it. They, they need a break um, from, from this stuff coming out. And then what you do is you say everything that happened since the Disney takeover, null and void. I don't care if you like Andor. I don't care if you like Mando. I don't care if you like uh, everything they've done. 
null and void start from scratch from 2012 um, it would it would be nice then. to think that like again like Moeller said with the Kathleen Kennedy apology thing it's never yeah. ever going to happen no, it, well, certainly happen. it's not going to happen but happen. that that's the only yeah. way you can actually heal all the bad things that have happened again well, I don't care if you're like but, rebels uh, I don't care whatever like you got to I, I think even stop with it. even then like you're going to get like some of those people who are somehow fans of the Disney era of Star They're Wars who are, are going to be absolutely infuriated by that and so again you've divided the fan base and like that's what I mean. It feels like a, essentially an unwinnable scenario right now, and I don't know what your play would be. We we talked about this before. Like, if you're going to not change anything or not, you don't have this mythical erase where I can delete everything that's happened. There's two options. You go way in the future, and you go way in the past. Exactly. I, like I yeah. would love. I, I've been advocating since they took over that they should do Old Republic. They should do Jedi Mandalorian Wars. Yep. They should do stuff like that. Uh, there's so much storytelling available, but they they have already in Disney canon like one shortened that timeline up a lot and screwed with it a lot, which they shouldn't have. Um, they, so they've already destroyed a lot of opportunities there. But you go 500 years in the future. Uh, you don't say your word Skywalker. You don't say the word Ray. You don't say the word Palpatine. And you just tell stories in this in this universe. Yep. Um, I, I think as well. What though, you the... can't do is pull on nostalgia. So they're too scared to do that. I mean, yep. yeah. And I think the other aspect that's always going to hold them back is the culture that now exists at Lucasfilm. And I hate to say it, but like it's gonna it's gonna permeate every project that they produce going forwards whether it's set a thousand years in the past or a thousand years in the future it doesn't matter you're going to get the same people working on it and they're going to infuse it with the same garbage that's crippled star wars up until this point yeah it's the same woke bullshit that they're constantly shoving down our throats and it's just a uh, time we need to focus on proper storytelling and not about who's telling the story or what their gender is i think that's really the first thing that we need to focus on and having a concrete timeline of where do these stories go? I mean, I really am so surprised with how the sequel trilogy turned out with it, how it was so disjointed. Like, how do you have one guy writing seven and then the other guy's already writing eight before seven finishes and they're not collaborating with each other whatsoever? Well, at the least from what I've heard. changed by request it, of what the guy wanted for eight. I yeah. fucking request. Right. So seven at the end was supposed to, for those who don't know, was supposed to have Luke Skywalker meditating like with massive boulders floating around. And then... Ryan goes in there, hey, do you do me a solid, bro? Can you make sure R2 is not in the ship? And can you also make sure that um, Luke Let's can't just use the stand force? In there. Yeah, He's fucking just decision, in there. man. To, to have Ray be the one to meet Luke, everyone they have on all. Yeah. So forced. Like, no way it would fucking be Ray. Should have been Han Solo. It would be it would be Chewie at R2 before it would be. <laughs> what the fuck? Why would no, it be No, Han Solo Ray? shouldn't have died. You should have just been like, all right, kid, I'm going to go see, uh, you know, whatever, whatever. So it's, and then he goes and he flies or, in. He's like, like, let me smooth it over before you go up there, Ray. And then he goes in, talks to him, and that's it. Or, or like, or, what about a or situation even if, where... even if fucking um, Han Solo was dead, okay, Leia would have gone along then uh, to do this. No, uh, she's busy doing general things. Or how she's... about how about we don't have Luke run off like a little bitch and hide what? and cut himself off from the Force? But, Crazy. It, but but there are things that you could use, like even if you're sticking with that stupid idea, there are things you could utilize, like have have somebody go to get him, but he's too late to save Han, and he comes back like and just misses. He's just late to save Han, and Han ends up dying. And then you do see Luke having to deal with like the guilt and seeing what he did, the bad decision he made. And then you do give him a lot of internal conflict, even though he's this you know incredible, powerful Jedi Master. That's something interesting you could do with the character, but. Remember, they, they cut, decided they cut his worst. reaction to Han's death. Yeah, you're right. Yep, excellently Leaded acted. Scene. What, what an amount. out. Yep, just just yeah. cut to a different scene because clearly we, yeah, we yeah. need more right. slow motion space. I chase. remember people at the time being like, "Not only do we already know he's going to be sad, so we don't need to see it. It's actually an expert editing cut because they reference Han is dead, and we cut to Kylo who killed him." I was like, mm, what the him. fuck? Like, why? How is that super? That him being sad is superfluous information, but us getting told visually that Kylo killed Han isn't. It's like, yeah, I saw cool. the previous movie. I was. Like, I, I can, I cannot imagine how frustrating it must have been to be Mark Hamill watching that movie and just seeing every single aspect of your character get removed. Yep. 
That's how you we know, felt. I, I, I know it's been covered ad, <laughs> ad nauseum, so I won't go into all of it again. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's kind of sickening when you think about it. And man, I can't think of a better hatchet job that anyone could have done on Luke Skywalker's character. There's a, a sad Ryan element as well of us talking about potential futures. It's like, we, this isn't the only thing that Disney is annihilating. Like, we've got this blueprint that they are almost following with Marvel. Um, theory, I think you're like less familiar with it, but like all of the characters in Marvel have been systematically fucking annihilated, and that the I've future does not look bright for Marvel. It looks even worse as like time goes on. And if they're not fixing that, is like, are they going to fix Star Wars? Like, probably not. They're stupid. I don't know why they they veered away from the Avengers. That was like the biggest money making th machine that they had, and it was entertaining as hell. I loved it. I loved watching the Avengers. And that's what I hope they do with Star Wars is not you know, like any Avengers thing, but with Thanos, okay, you're focusing on, uh, what was the guy's name? R R Ragul or what was it? <laughs> Ray Shal Ghul? No, no. That's Batman no. Begins? Oh. No, the dude with the purple. Uh, oh, Ronan? Ronan. Yeah, yeah, you had Ronan, and he's like the big bad or whatever. But even him, like, you know, okay, this guy's going to get eliminated or you don't know what's going to happen. Maybe he's going to win. You have an even bigger on top, which is Thanos, yeah. and he's just mm -hmm. chilling. Which was like kind of Snoke, right? It was, and that was I was like, all right, cool. So we got this guy, we got Kylo Ren, and we got Snoke just chilling, kind of like the Emperor who survived and like is here superseded the Emperor. Fucking nothing happened with him. He got diced in two seconds, <laughs> and then turned think, into like a vat of clones, just like the 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 Snoke clones provided endless entertainment for all of us. Like, uh, and they're all force be... sensitive. Like what? Like what? It would be know. like a sad thing to do, but kind of funny. It would be looking at all the theories at the time, being like, that was Snoke's trick. He wants Kylo to think he's... Dude, that's yes. what I, I... I made that theory. Yeah, it's it's like, uh, all, the, all that brain power done to, yeah. at the time, make it better. <laughs> like it's... Dude, I, literally, I was coping so hard at the time. I'm like, guys, you don't understand. Like, it's just poetry. It rhymes. It's like Luke did the same thing on Crate. Snoke did the same thing in the throne room. He's off somewhere on a planet, like, plotting his next move or some shit for the next so, movie. He's still around. Maybe him and Luke are going to fight in the netherworld or something. <laughs> so, so did you go no. into Rise of Skywalker with uh, still expectations and hopes that it was going to redeem the series? Did you think they can still pull it back? But, or had you given yeah. up by that point? No, I was excited. I was like, okay, Palpatine's back. Okay, cool. Oh, Obviously, okay. so they're going to have Luke fight him because Luke's not dead. He's probably so powerful that he can go in and out of the Force and in and out of the Netherworld, and he's going to learn from Yoda, Obi-Wan, Anakin. This is going to be amazing. He's going to come back like at the last moment. He's going to fight the Emperor. Emperor's going to be full power. I thought it was going to be sick. No. it was. Something who needs Luke Skywalker when you are all the Jedi? I mean, well, that on. was the thing. Yeah. And at the time, I really liked it because of how they redeemed Luke, but redeemed him from destroying him and then i started thinking about it and especially when I, I saw gary say he's like when the rose colored glasses come off you're gonna realize and i was like and then time started to pass and i'm like wait a second why am i happy with a shitty situation for it being less shitty than less shitty but it's still super yeah. shitty that's like being in a horrible relationship and it's like okay well today is maybe a bit of a better day that it's like no it's still at least shit. i didn't at least i didn't get hit today at least i didn't get uh, yelled yeah. at or screamed yeah. at, like, or told to die it's like well okay how about no let's just maybe reassess everything be like how about we find a movie that's supposed to actually evolve luke skywalker's character from where he was in six which was beautifully done from the shitty farm boy who didn't know anything and had hopes and dreams into turning into this dope character in Return of the Jedi. But no, we regressed. And then Han Solo as well regressed. He was a hero, turns into... Like some, deadbeat dad. Like a deadbeat dad. Yeah. Like Literally a the same dude. That, that's the biggest like Cineforce Awakens for me upon a lot is that they regressed Han Solo and reverted him back to the same exact Damn, dude. Wish. Worse. Yeah, basically, that Luke walked into Worse. the Older and, and less, less capable than he was before. Yeah, yeah. and he's still, like, doing the same things, getting in trouble with, like, the same group of people, and, you know, abandon his family. Well, crazy. And, and um, then you have to, you obviously have to have that moment of Ray yeah. showing him how to, like, manipulate his own spaceship that he's been flying since before she was born. Like, ah, this, bypass the compressor. Like, feels like everyone's got different yeah. lines for what, like, took them from sort of the good faith. Like, they, they've got this to the, uh-oh. Because uh, I think I remember when TFA when I saw Han like that, I was like, "This has this is there's a point to this." Like they they they're trying to talk about like how there are elements of him 
that have come back into frame because of difficulties he's had and that we're moving him somewhere and we're doing something with it. But then, you know, like you, you really focus, really read into it and you're like, man, they made him such a retard. Like the, the fact that he owes everyone money, he's got everything out all over the place. He's super incompetent. Yeah. He's trying to steal. He lost the Falcon, hasn't gotten it back in however long. He's getting showed up by some random mechanic. It's just like, what have, what's going on? This isn't hard solo at all. And then, yeah. Because uh, it was funny when I was talking about like what they did to Luke being almost unprecedented. I think it might have been Gary or someone else at the time, like years back on stream. He was like, "No, this is not unprecedented. They did it to Han first. And I was like, "Oh shit, yeah!" Like it's definitely like uh, earlier as a sort of clue what was going to happen in terms of how they were writing this. And I think Obi Wan. I I've talked about this a lot. There's like a couple different lines of demarcation where some people have like fallen out with Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, for, for people, for me, the first time I developed that kind of like bitterness was in 2014 when they said, hey, Legends is now over, or EU is now Legends, we're wiping the slate clean. That was disappointing for me, it was upsetting, yeah. whatever. So I decided to go into Force Awakens and give it a shot, even though I was, you know, not very happy at the time. That was a disaster for me. So that was kind of like my hopping off part. Last Jedi was another one for a lot of people where you saw a big group of people say, I, I can't do this anymore. Obi-Wan Kenobi, that show was another big one, like this big line where a lot of people, they were so hopeful for something, they saw what they did and they're like, nah, I, I can't have that mindset anymore after what I've seen them do to more characters I care about. Yeah, I think because um, up until that point, he'd been one of the last untouched characters, like legacy characters where you could say, you know, um, they've ruined Han, they've ruined Luke, um, all the rest, but like Obi-Wan Kenobi's fine. Like they haven't messed with him, and then the show came along, and then you realize they've got their claws into everyone now, and there's they're not going to stop. There's no character that they won't humiliate and uh, and destroy, and it's just it's never going to end until they've they've just gone through the entire catalog of Star Wars characters. Um, I noticed with Kenobi as well was how like this is the similar sort of character assassination -y stuff, but also just why is everything now looking so. Rushed together because at least the sequels they have that veneer of of lots of money was fucking pumped into this. Kenobi mm -hmm. looks awkward a lot of the time. And it looks I horrible. I think it was bad, bad direction. I think. And Andor did it good. not have a, a much smaller budget than Obi Wan? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Obi Wan's budget was probably around a hundred million or something, right? Ninety, which is crazy it, numbers, but like compared to like a lot of the other Star Wars shows, it's actually a lot less, isn't it? Uh, Andor was like, what? 250? Andor was like two or 250, but again, you have to look at one cost per episode and how they're shooting them. The reason they love that volume so much is because they can keep the cost down for shows like Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan. Andor was filmed on location. They built the whole set in the UK. Yeah. Um, but Andor was... Andor's basically $20 million an episode, I think, when you break it down, right? Jeez. And Obi-Wan Kenobi is about $15 million per episode. <laughs> so per episode, Where it, whereas it's not... it looks... It looks like about two million was spent per episode on it. Like it looks, yeah. yeah like Moore said, it, it, it looks cheap. Yeah. Up, up to you completely, but I just feel like <laughs> that newest super chat is it was a spotlight. <laughs> I just think it's funny to read. Oh wait, where? What is it? One. I, I have it on full screen. Certainly, me and Ryan there. will be interested. Ah in oh, well. <laughs> if you don't get rid of Moller and Ryan, me and a handful of others will unsubscribe. Um, well, Ryan, let's get going. We'll start free. our own. Yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> Feel I'm free. Go it's funny. I, listen, I'm. I oh, wait, can only be here. Actually, didn't mention me. Wait, no. I. You know what? <laughs> You're I, a good I, drinker. I, no, I'll see you guys. Yeah. No, fuck this. Hey, all right. Welcome to the show, everyone. I That's hope it. you guys please subscribe. No, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the new co-host now. <laughs> fuck it. If you want to unsubscribe, go ahead, man. Be my guest. I'm, I ain't bending to anybody. This is my show. This is my channel. These are my friends. And if you got a problem with it, don't watch. Simple as that. If you can't handle two or four, well, four, I can't count four dudes talking about stuff in Star Wars, then you're very intolerant of anything that doesn't coincide or echo your own beliefs and views. And I just, I don't live with that. I don't stand with that. You got to have different opinions. And each one of us have different opinions, but we're coming together and we're hanging out. So yeah, I think uh, let's- I'll drink on. to that. Yeah. Well, so all four of us, I think, I would have different pathways and stories to tell if we had control <laughs> and everything. You know, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to take a little, a little drink? I'll take either? a little drink. I might as well. All right. What I, is that? I, a dildo or a gun? <laughs> or it's, it's, a dar it's a derringer. <laughs> okay. You know, it could be used however you want, I suppose. It's, it's, it's my next, it's, it's my next lightsaber. Be, it's my next lightsaber, eh? <laughs>
Speaking of which, new saber dropping on Theory Sabers. Plug if you guys want to go check it out. It's dropping in the next few days, starting at 175. So taking a big hit on the cost, but um, definitely want to give you guys more affordable stuff. It's gonna be pretty dope. Theory, um, oh. like, because I feel like we we've we've been awfully negative Cheers. in this stream, and I don't want to be like that. No. There, there has been some good stuff that's come out over the past few it's years. It's been bothering me too, Drinker. I, mean. <laughs> I don't know. I can't, can't handle this. Uh, I want to inject a little bit of positivity into it. Like, we, most of us here, I think, enjoyed Andor. We appreciated that as a pretty well written Star Wars show. Most of Is you that know. a direction that the Star Wars uni universe can head down? Um, yeah. Something that's a bit more grounded, a bit more um, serious, a bit more thoughtful, and, yeah. you know, contemplative. And a little more so. disconnected from the grand scale of the galactic, you know, which is like ironic yeah. considering where it's leading. Well, you know, it's just yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I like think... it doesn't have to have the force, it doesn't have to have Jedi, it doesn't have to have lightsabers in it necessarily. It could be about no. regular people doing really heroic things that I might am... not be huge in the like initially, but it adds up to a, a massive Drinker, I am change. Yeah, to toss absolutely. in some lightsabers, some Vader, and some talking if it means the, the show will be more, get some more eyes on it. Well, those things do get more eyes, and people are like, "You just want lightsabers in the force." I'm like, "Well, that's Star Wars." I'm not really. against it. I just uh, yes. I want to make sure we get back on track for the substantive stuff in Star Wars. It's not like lightsabers are what made me feel so much in the Luke Vader throne room scene. I mean, like, no, but I like that they're there, and I know what they're for, and I understand they're part of the universe. And so, and they're cool. You know, if if Andor goes from being like it gets like times five the viewership, if Vader has yeah. three scenes the whole season, it's like sure, yeah, go for it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, no, that'd be sick. I mean, you don't have to have lightsabers and everything, uh, but it definitely makes it more flashy, more cool. But also, you know, it becomes redundant too. So at the same time, you got to kind of pick and choose. However, with the thing with Andor was that it was um, the production value was the best of any Star Wars show we've had. I think. Mm, on par with Mando season two, probably maybe even better. I think if we get Tony Gilroy, like we've said many times, Tony Gilroy, Sam Witwer, Dave Filoni, and John Favreau together, maybe maybe take Dave and put him in a corner. <laughs> I knew you'd uh, say that. Like, let those let the adults do the. the I talking. knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew that shit was coming. But... Like, all right, here, Dave, go play with the Soka doll over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I think that they uh, they should absolutely focus on more. A little bit like disconnected storytelling as well. I think in general, right now, yeah. people are very tired of shared universes. Yeah. You know, whether it comes to yeah. like DC, Marvel, like all these people that are building these different things. So I think look at the Underworld show that George Lucas, you know, initially had plans for. They yeah. even, you know, kind of repurpose some of those scripts for things. Yeah. That was supposed to be very much a, you know, little entries that were disconnected they're all taking place you know in the underworld or whatever coruscant but it wasn't necessarily supposed to connect in any major ways it was just interesting stories and i think that that would be a cool thing to go down i've said it before i think andor is probably the the most um i think it's the best thing they've done i do not like cassie and andor as a character um like just in general i don't really care about him or his motivation so it's tough for me to like watch that show and be invested in it but i would be totally down for more entries like andor in the star wars galaxy because it's yeah. the most competent thing they've done and i don't even think it's really close yeah. I, I definitely agree with your point there about um i would like to see some disconnected stuff where it's just like standalone adventures in different parts of the galaxies it doesn't have to be tied into like um the the jedi and luke skywalker and everything because all of that betrays uh, a lack of confidence in your storytelling you know none of this stuff can stand on its own merits it has to reference uh recognizable characters and uh like stuff that people can latch on to because without that it's not interesting enough no how about you just make better stuff stuff that is actually interesting that does have compelling characters it's set within the Star Wars universe, but it doesn't have to hang on desperately to all these little life rafts to try and keep it afloat. That would, would be that would be definitely the way you can move forward because it's it's a massively complex galaxy that you know, and, and it's gone through enormous upheavals in the span of a few decades. You've seen the rise and fall of the Empire, all the chaos that comes from that. Then you've seen the rise of the First Order. You can do lots of things within that framework that could be excellent, that could be really fascinating stories, showing it from different perspectives. 
but they've they've just never done it. Would you be interested to know what happened with Mando season three? Because I have a subscriber that wants to hop on right now that spoke with John Favreau at a coffee shop, and he says he has some really interesting information about what exactly happened that John told him. So I think it's your show, should, man. <laughs> yeah, I think sure. we should uh, bring him on because I'm I haven't heard the story. I've been waiting to do it live. Um, but finally, I feel like this is a good time, so I'm going to send him the link, and then he can tell us, and we can continue on with everything. Because I Did he find a thumb drive in the Lucasfilm parking lot? No, he ran into him at a coffee shop or something like that, and he like literally asked him, he was like, why did it feel so different? And he didn't tell me the, the whole story yet, because he wanted to come on, and I'm like, all right, we'll bring you on one day, man. But... <laughs> His name's not Mike Zero, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. No. <laughs> no. Um, but... I'm curious to know what happened with that because I really don't think that that was all John's uh, idea. So, you know, do you have, because you were kind of talking about your reaction to Rise of Skywalker, and I kind of remember your first reaction where it seemed like you were fairly like positive about oh, it. I was, and, yeah, I was happy. I was yeah, happy. you were like happy about it. Yeah. Do you think, because um, you obviously do a lot of these like watch party and then like react with the chat and everything. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that, doing those live reactions while you're sitting there in front of like so many people that are like hyped about stuff. Do you think that ever affects your feeling about something in the immediate aftermath? No, no. Like for me, I I've noticed that I can feel very differently about movies. If I'm in a packed theater where a lot of people are hyped about something versus if I watch it by myself, like my, my interpretation of that can be a little bit different because I'm going get, to get carried away. So I, was, I never do watch parties or anything like that. So that's why I was wondering. If you ever yeah, felt I would that say way. in the past where I wasn't totally fucking delusional with where Star Wars was going and I thought it was still in very much like cahoots with George Lucas and I wasn't trying to create theories that would almost fix their poor writing, to say in a nice way. Uh, you know, I'd say now I'm so I mean, look at bricks and screws situation. You know, I'm so much more candid now with everything. I don't think it uh, impacts too much. I think with Rise of Skywalker, I came out of that and I was so happy that Luke was in a sense redeemed. Like he grabbed the lightsaber, he raised the X-Wing. Shit we wanted him to do. Well, shit he never should have even had to do because he was um, literally castrated in The Last Jedi. But yeah, I mean, I I don't feel like it impacts me at all. I'm pretty candid. I'm like, oh, if I don't like it, I don't like it. Cancel me. You can cancel it anyways, so whatever. Makes well, yeah, I, I wouldn't say anything. I was just wondering because I'm not somebody that does those watch or watch along streams or whatever. You should. I think, I think a lot of your, I would watch it if you did it. Yeah. I, uh, I, think, I, I think it is, and I respect you for doing it because it is difficult to give a good insightful like analysis of a film when it's off the cuff and you're just yeah. experiencing it for the first time because like yeah. for me generally i need a bit of time to go off and think about what worked and what didn't rather than try to react to it as i go i agree and definitely when i marinate on it for like maybe a couple weeks i'm definitely able to have a better consensus about how i felt over the film however um i think people are pretty understanding of that so when i do like an initial immediate reaction it's like okay cool and then I'll come back to it and do a, re a full review within a couple weeks. And usually it's pretty much the same review. It's just maybe um, not as perhaps emotional or uh, a little more well thought out in yeah, a sense. Yeah. Like the, sure. the, the movie that affected me more than anything else like that was 100% Endgame. Like driving back from the theater of Endgame and the experience of watching Endgame, the culmination of a decade of storytelling and so many people and watch it like opening day like crowd going wild like even though i was like finding problems with and had issues with some of the time travel or some of the character arcs it was still such a massively emotional experience for me yeah and then on the 20 minute drive i started thinking about everything and i'm like man well i mean it was cool but this was fucking like, fuck stupid that. it's and always it, the drive home where it starts yeah, isn't yeah. it especially if you've got your buddies with you like because then you start talking about it like oh this thing didn't make sense that didn't make sense I, I usually I just, it, it just peters like it. out after five minutes, but man, sometimes it keeps going, and you know you've watched a fucking stinker. In Dude, that once case. they once they started doing the time travelers, like no, fuck this. Yeah, big super chat from I love Jet Trooper. We're gonna read your super chats later. I, I think Drinker, you're you're only here for how much longer? Are you chilling? Uh, I've got a couple hours, so okay, cool. You're chilling. Yeah. I've um, only got fifteen minutes. I'm on bond. <laughs> 
Sorry. And Sorry. Mahler's like, I've, o- I've only got negative eight minutes. I should have gone <laughs> eight minutes ago. Um, <laughs> there I go. Yeah, so uh, Von Rum's going to tell us real quick about what went down with John Favreau. And um, yeah, what's going on, man? Hey, guys. How you doing? What's up, Von Rum? Howdy. Hello. Mike, Mike Zero, are you fucking serious? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> oh, so yeah, no, um, it was very fucking brief. It wasn't, he wasn't like sitting down or anything. Um, friends were out, me and my friends were drinking, and I needed to sober up because I was the designated driver and shit. So I went down to uh, a coffee oh, hold shop. On. Hold on, I just wait, wanna, wait, wait. I just want to stop you your story. This. I, I, so shit so me, and then. My, me and my friends were out drinking, and I needed to sober up because I was the DD. That's what you said, right? <laughs> <laughs> just clarify. Yeah, I'm the, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I sympathize with this situation. So I, res- I respect the game. I just want to make sure we all understood. Yeah. <laughs> was it really John Favreau or the? It, yeah, no. <laughs> you're so you're drunk John Favreau. Just look like John Favreau. God, just John Favreau. It, it might have been a like, homeless guy who's dressed man. like Abraham Lincoln, but what can you do? You know, that's just the way he rolls. It's like Jesus. some hobo on the street. <laughs> John Favreau. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it was, it was, he was. So I just I was waiting for my order and and I looked over and you know I recognized them but I'm like I don't fucking talk to him I'm like oh I, I got to ask him about fucking Star Wars because of all the shit that's going on but I'm like he's not gonna say a lot like he, he there's no way so I, I walked up to him and I was like okay I was like you know I had a question like uh, so what was the reason why you know Grogu was uh, taken away from Luke again just so suddenly was like you're gonna use him in the Ray movie or what and he kind of just like smirked at me he's like I you know I can't say anything about that like. And he, but he's making this look at me like, like, yeah, I think, yeah, I obviously think that's going to happen. Um, but, oh. uh, so I asked him, I was like, what, what happened? Like, I'm not saying this, I told him not in a negative way, but what was the, what was the reason for the changes between season two and three? Um, you know, I noticed it was obviously about Din Djarin and it became more about Bo and how they kind of just separated away from that. And he said, well, in the first two seasons, he's like, we had a little bit more creative control um there were a few uh, company changes that uh that i guess um that really had an effect on uh, our overall creative control in the story um and when he told me that i was thinking to myself like well at that time i know kathleen kennedy and her like dei uh story group were focused on something called children of blood and bone and uh usually you guys remember when Favreau and and uh, there was like this weird rumor going around that Favreau and Kathleen Kennedy had a problem with each other or there was some kind of tension there behind the scenes. Um, I think it was because they m- might have started messing with uh, his story that he originally had had for season three, which makes sense because season three was very Kathleen Kennedy esque. Weird. Um, so um, I feel like so ev- the way the way from my understanding at Lucasfilm is that any doesn't matter what kind of who you are you write a story you write a a script everything has to go through a dei check like it's literally like a filter that they have and uh from from my understanding that the reason why things keep happening the way they do is because they have that dei stuff in place i mean obviously i think that's pretty self-explanatory we all kind of know that they have stuff like that but everything has to go through it so when he told me when he told me that those changes happened and it was around the time that Bob uh, Chapek was gone and Bob Iger came back in, it made perfect sense as to why maybe Bob Iger put Kathleen Kennedy back on, um, put Kathleen Kennedy back on Star Wars duty instead of Children Blood and Blow, uh, Children of Blood and Bone. I think that's what it's called. So um, he says, obviously, I can't say much, but we we see we see we see all the criticisms and stuff. We see everything. We care. We're just doing with what we can. So. I feel like I honestly feel like there's people that actually do work for Lucasfilm that really see all this stuff, but obviously they're kind of probably shamed for even trying to say anything or do anything. Oh, I'm not, of course, no. I, I know for a fact that there's I for a fact I know from friends of mine that are very <clears> close <throat> with a lot of the these guys. Um, they there's a, a full like team. There's like a room of people that look over all of the social media stuff of right. every one of us, whether it be <clears> Instagram, <throat> TikTok, or whatever. There's they're scanning everything. It's probably some of them watching the stream. So they want to see what people are saying. They want to see what's going on. They want to see what the consensus is of everybody and, you know, who to blacklist, who not to, who to allow in and uh, basically get reports. They're all about data. Right. All about data reports. So, yeah, 
Um, I think um, it's. I, I remember. Go ahead. Just so I, so what Farrow told you is basically that. Um, well, you know, there's been some changes at the company lately, and I can't really go in anything, but you know that might be why. So we hear you guys, and we hear your complaints. That's what he said. Essentially, yeah. And oh, then he true. also, um, um, because I, you know, I asked him. I told him like we we feel like a lot of us. It's it's like it's not we get labeled as all of these isms and ists. You know, and he's and uh, you tell him, we're, you told we're, him we're, this? We're, not, we're not. Yeah, I told him straight up. He's like, we don't a lot of us don't fall in line with those words, those names that people like to call us just because we we criticize one or two or three characters or how yeah. it's written. You know, yeah. I really hope I told him, like, I really hope that this stuff doesn't really uh, this this negative stuff that happens on social media or if there's anybody on the inside that kind of supports the opposite side of the fandom that kind of push it, which theory, you know, it happens. Um, yeah, oh yeah. that we, 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 we think we all hear no pretty yeah good, you know? yeah oh yeah it you know i don't want I, I told him like i don't want i don't want people at lucasfilm thinking that we're some kind of fucking crazy ass fucking hateful people we just want the star wars that we all knew that we all grew up with that we carried for years you know like we talked about the other day on theory talks it's like you know there are it, yeah, Star Wars is for everybody, but I, there's no way in hell that you're not going to tell me that there's certain people that care about it more than others. I, it's it's the truth, and I'm not afraid to say that. It's well, for sure. Yeah, I mean, ab absolutely. But that's kind of like <clears throat> the issue in today's world is you have like newcomers, you know, these young whippersnappers, so to speak, come in and they're kind of like, yeah, I know it better than you. It's like, what you just what are you talking about? You, you just, just got started, here. You just got here. We've been here for <laughs> decades, right? You know, it yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yep. But and yeah, it, well, I don't know. It is I don't know. Is. I I feel like I don't know. I, I feel like if there wasn't those because they have to operate in that bubble, right? Like, let's say you're the most creative person in the world. They have to operate within those parameters of what they expect their scripts and their shows to look like. So no matter how well you put something, obviously, it's not going to it's going to be watered down or changed. Like, I know for a fact, like I can I, I know for a fact that the reason why we never had Luke actually train Ray is probably because somewhere along the lines it became problematic that a man was teaching a woman what to do. Like that's how I feel like these people think. A lot of these people think, and we can't we can't get a cohesive story without it somehow offending somebody, and it's fucking annoying. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I don't know where it's. I, I don't know about that, but I I just don't. I think the writing was shit, and I don't think they probably knew Star Wars very well. But yeah. Anyways, hey man, uh, thanks for popping on for a sec and telling us about that interaction. Um, yeah, you having a good day? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I just got home. Cool. Okay, well, I'll, maybe I'll catch you oh, on Theory yeah. Talks tonight, man. All right, sounds good, dude. All right, bro. Catch you all later. Right, later. Yeah, man. Thanks. Later. See you guys. Yeah, if, if I'm if I'm looking at the uh, the state of Mandalorian season two and Book of Boba Fett and uh, Mando season three, if I was to be as charitable as possible, everybody involved, I think a one thing that you can look at what happened is the behind the scenes drama with Pedro Pascal um where it sounded like he was ready to quit and that's why they kind of rushed out book of boba fett and that might be why they brought grogu back so quick things like this just in case their lead star did in fact just say i'm up and out so they could replace him uh right. they could replace mana with bo katan they could replace right. him with boba fett they could have all these other characters right. um it, like if i'm being as generous as possible and like trying to be like i understand why you might have made some of these decisions even though they're fucking really stupid that's one thing that I can look at and like have some understanding for as to why maybe some things went down that way. Um, that, that to me makes a lot of sense compared to like some of the other speculation out there. Mm -hmm. Cause that, that shit did happen. Like the Pedro Pascal getting very upset and like nearly quitting the show did happen. Well, I assumed it like halted production on season three of Mando. That's why it's so disjointed and fucked up that, the the proto episodes of that season are in a different season being the reclamation of a new ship and the reestablishing him Grogu that is obviously something that should have been in his own show not in Boba Fett oh shit Commander Shepard says I met, met Dave Filoni at a restroom invite me I can imagine what you were doing with Dave Filoni in a men's <laughs> what restroom what were you doing with him in the restroom right. was he still wearing his cowboy hat I hope so <laughs> he was like call me George call me George <laughs> oh Jesus <laughs> Dave Filoni for you. Oh no. Um, I I've only got a little bit left, but I did have one question, Theory. I know you made a video about the rumored "What If" Star Wars series. Oh yeah, yeah. And I've seen a lot of people that are like, you know, 
oh, we don't need that or whatever. The truth is, like, be we, dope. We, we had what if Star Wars comics and stories for, yep. you know, from decades ago. Yeah. Yeah, Star yeah. Wars Infinities, you had, you know, what if Luke hadn't destroyed the Death Star? What yeah. would A New Hope look yeah. like? Like, right. those stories were told and they were very interesting and intriguing. Yeah. And I don't have any problem with telling those stories as long as you're delineating clearly to everybody that they're not in continuity. Um, and I think those things could be cool. Well, now with the people that are in charge of stories at Lucasfilm, I don't have any faith in them. But the principle of it, I think, could be cool. No, I, I, Mauler and I were discussing this earlier. Like, you know, what if um, Anakin had defeated Obi-Wan on Mustafar or something like that? Like, okay, great. Like, th this is interesting stuff. Like, what they'll probably do is, like, what if Rey was even more awesome than she was in the movies? <laughs> Like that that's the level of thinking that's gonna be involved in stuff. Or like what, if, what if Padme shame, was a it, Jedi? What if Padme yeah. was force sensitive? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. What if every female character had the force? Oh wait, we already have what that. If, what if Rose Tico was the bestest Jedi ever instead of Ray? Like what if, what if Leia what, destroyed the Death Star instead? I, I well, hope that they take a, a maybe some inspiration from the fan fictions that I've done because that's it's honestly what I've done is what a lot of the fans want to see, including myself. So it's like what if Qui Gon didn't die? Dude, fuck, that'd be so cool. The, the it, fundamental problem I think that they have now is, and it's probably the same for everyone, is I just um, almost cringe with fear uh, whenever they announce a new project because it's not like... Uh, I, I just don't think there's anything they could announce that would get me excited and think like, oh, brilliant, this is, this is gold. This is going to be an awesome film or an awesome yeah. TV show or whatever. It's more yeah. a case of, oh, God, what are they going to fucking ruin next? This reminds me of and, when people are like, it's Doctor Doom will save the MCU or Galactus. Bring him in and we can make this happen, make this happen, make this happen. And the same thing that will happen to them is what happened to Thrawn. Years of people wanting Thrawn to come in for live action. Finally get him and he's a retard. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, you're, you're, the, yeah, your fundamental problem is not the characters that you have at your disposal or the ones that you've chosen to use thus far. Your problem is the people who are working with them now. The showrunners, the writers... Those are the people that you're going to have to change out, mm -hmm. and I don't think they will. I don't think they they've got they've got it in them to make such a massive change of corporate culture. Yeah, I mean, it, to be honest, like Ahsoka kind of is a what if series. What if Ahsoka was the most important character in Star Wars? What if Sabine, in addition to being like a technological mm -hmm. technological technological genius and a Mandalorian, what if she could also use the Force? Yeah. Well, not in the same she vein, we already those, done... what ifs. those are those are if those are it is happening. <laughs> if you said <laughs> yeah, to uh to them, like it would be really cool to do a what if of like what if Obi Wan got involved in some kind of mission between the prequel year and the OT year, and they'd be like, we did do that, and you're like, <laughs> I don't know what the hell you did, but like we should, you know, do it properly. It would be nice, you know, it'd be nice if we get back on track here, but it, and I feel like it would suck. It sucks because like. I feel like with season one and two of Mando, man, there was like that was a huge hype time for Star Wars. Everyone was happy, and then it just kind of changed with Boba Fett. I love that noise you made there, Mole. I got yeah, everyone I, was I, happy. I, I was like, nah. I made the I made the head noise. I will. Get I made the head noise, and he made the chat. noise. It, it, the, my community will be really upset with me if they're like, you just sat there when they said that season one you two said was nothing. awesome. Well, no, you like, you said the the other day you said the R word, and like, how dare you allow him to say something like this? You know, that just tells me everything I need to know about you. And I'm like, what? It's what our word. About? Like, I dude, we're reclaiming it. Uh, yes, that's over at EFAT. Right we God. outright got in serious trouble for being hypercritical of season one. But that, um, you know, well, whatever. Days... I mean, yeah, we could talk about it all day, but I I, I liked season one. I liked season two. Sure, it could have been better, but no, I think it was great. I think it but was I'll a great say, story. what I will say is this if they had announced a Mandalorian and Grogu movie right after season two, yeah. I think there would have been a decent amount of hype surrounding it. I. I think on that first FNT after the Mando season two season finale, I said, this all feels like Force Awakens to me because I didn't like mm -hmm. Force Awakens. I didn't like season two. Um, but then the, the way people were acting and the hype that people had, the nostalgia, it felt like it was all going to come crumbling down at some point. I feel like we've kind of seen that a little bit with now the way people feel about it. Um, so the reality is this announcement, I, I think it's very... I, I, it had the effect on the news cycle that they were hoping for because now yeah. every article is about this. Yeah. But I don't know if it got, I don't know if it generated a ton of excitement from people the way they were probably hoping or the way it would have two years ago. 
No, a- definitely Ryan. not. Not after season three. Was, season three uh, shat the bed. Was Luke character Ollie of Man? Are you asking me this question? I'm asking you that question. Um, I, I, here's my problem. I feel like Luke Skywalker, but I can get over the bad, like, you know, CGI dead eyes face. Oh, yeah, right? of course. Um, for me, um, I believe Luke Skywalker, uh, you know, the first thing he would have said is like some acknowledgement of like everyone else there in terms of, are you okay? Like what's happening here? Why is there an Imperial Moth? What, it, what is this entire thing? Like, what's the empire doing here? Getting to the bottom of some of these things instead of just like, I'm here for the baby and fucking like, uh, <laughs> like walking away. I, to me, that was not like what Luke Skywalker would have done. So I it was, was very, it was, yeah, I took like, it as a lot of as, it was like, we have to keep his dialogue to an absolute minimum because he, yeah, it's expensive. He's, yeah, exactly. I, I kind of took it as like, okay, he just kind of has everything under control. Like when he walked into Jabba's palace, like, he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't care who this guy is. It doesn't matter. He's already defeated the emperor. If he says it's going to be a big problem, he's going to take care of it. But for right now, his sole focus is to train the child. And that's like all he cares about because that's where the future of the Jedi are. And without that, you know, he's not going to spend his time trying to like just walk up and stab Moff Gideon. But, but do you, <laughs> you feel know? like that takes but do you feel like that takes away a little bit of like the heart and soul of Luke Skywalker, who is like this truly like caring individual who cares about people's well-being? Like a million to percent. me, look like yeah. Luke Skywalker would a hundred percent make sure that they were okay. And like ask them like questions and stuff for sure. Um, so that's why that whole for thing sure is like he's very strange to me. Also uniquely poised to be like, wait, 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 this guy like is this what's going on with the empire? Because like he he would have big reason among a lot of characters to be like, will not let the empire rise again. So what the fuck is this? What are these like? What was the army of robots? Where'd that come from? <laughs> How'd they make that I shit? Do, I do <laughs> love this this notion that he shows up and fucking kills everyone and then goes. So what's actually happening here? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, <laughs> it's like, well, you just killed a, our army of babysitters. They were supposed to protect this child. Uh... <laughs> the real threat's coming through. It's like, <laughs> no, yeah, I don't know. I kind of is... took it as like, he, maybe he can, I mean, the thing with Anakin was that he could literally see into the force. Like he could see situations as to why things are happening. So maybe Luke was having the same sort of, the thing with me, dude, is like, I literally will fill in the gaps in my head. Because I feel like I know the character I, so well. I feel like, and I think like that's that's part of the problem. I think because the explanations you give are way more intelligent than anything the actual writers yeah. of the shows would give. They've been yeah. coasting because you on know that it so much more. The whole fandom. They they yeah. They're, they're like they're like filling everything. They're like, how are we going to explain this? Yeah, Star Wars theory will figure it out for us. Right. Like, like, you know. what what you got with things like Luke coming back at, at season two finale is very much in line with Anakin coming back in Ahsoka. It's not as egregious as that, but it's the same mm. mentality behind it of, this is a character that everyone loves, that's really recognizable. Yeah. Let's bring him back for this finale because it gives it a real impactful moment. The point like, how does he get there? How does he know what's going on? Ah, just don't worry too much about that. Like they'll, People will get so swept up in the emotion of the moment that it won't really matter. Yeah. And I no, think... I know. I know. And, and, and it worked. Especially yeah. after Last Jedi. You know, it was amazing to see that. Yeah. And I think, I, I think well, that played into it a great deal. Yeah. The best of Star Wars doesn't require theories to like understand and enjoy it. You know, we don't have of like, you know, the, the throne room scene is not explained by theory. It's explained by watching enamored with the, the history that came before. Yeah. And I just like, we're so far away from anything close to that, that it, it's like outright sad that I don't, I'm not saying it's sad to do it. It's sad that we all have to do it. Like, we all have to be like, well, maybe this, 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 yeah. maybe this, 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 maybe when they For said sure. the incredibly stupid thing, they meant this thing that's less stupid. Well, that's, you know, wel welcome to my channel is kind of just like, <laughs> like you know, I don't want to say fixing Star Wars, but kind of like filling in, the th well, theory, Star Wars theory. It's the theory of <laughs> fucking like disjointed plot points that don't really make sense and me trying to cope, I guess, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's like, you know, what if Vader had never actually told Luke that he's his father? So we'd be like, well, what if that little look he gave there? I mean, that could have mean. Maybe it means <laughs> Vader's actually his father. Like, you don't need that to enjoy Empire Strikes Back. No, you don't. And uh, But, you know, I'm sure at the time there were probably many different theories. It's like, who's the emperor? Like, what does he do? But, you know, obviously there wasn't YouTube at the time. But, I mean, now it's it's like, okay, as we progress in this story... You know, back then it was like the Emperor was just like one episode kind of thing. You just saw him in, in Empire and that was it. But mm -hmm. then you have like 
episode one through six. Then you bring in Snoke. So obviously this guy is now going to be extremely questioned because of who came before him. So you're going to have all these different theories and stuff like that. And it's going to like just basically, it could even mislead the fan base in a crazy sense because people will like certain theories more than the actual product, the more the actual answer. And in the case of Snoke, I mean, freaking the stupidest one I saw was Snoke is Mace Windu. That was the that stupidest one. Makes one? Me even, that one makes even more sense than um, him dying. Like, my favorite one, I think it was a troll, but my favorite one was that Snoke is the old lady from the archives in Clone Wars. Jocasta knew, yeah. yeah because... I did hear that one because of his robe kind yeah, of looked like her. Yeah, the robe. He did, yeah. yeah. My, my favorite one by far is that because of the scar on his face, that Snoke was the stormtrooper that bumped his head in A New Hope <laughs> that one's uh, when they're in the Death Star. That's my that favorite good. Snoke. That'd theory. be amazing if it was true. That one's good. Yeah. Also, uh, could be Sors Bandim, the kid that died at Anakin's hand. Like, to be fair, any of these theories would have been better than what we got. So well, nothing. Which is he's nothing. nothing. He was a test tube baby. So I think at this it was, point, it's it's like to be a fan of it and to try to pull goodness out of what they've produced in the past 10 years, it's like just sifting through the rubble of a bombed out building, hoping yeah. that you're going to find like, it is. It really is. That's what it feels like. Yeah. That's what it feels Not like. Not even hoping you're going to find someone alive, just hoping you find their body. Uh, yeah. That's maybe a, a body though. part, maybe an arm. Something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. a finger. Do we have identifying? <laughs> do we find their teeth? Can we match this to dental records? <laughs> like, oh, that's Larry's tattoo there on his arm. I recognize that. <laughs> I There's found no a money. wallet. Nice. <laughs> like, no money. Now, where's the body? <laughs> Yeah, uh, but and, you know, it's competence. It just comes down to who you're hiring, and and you know, I really fear for this new Ray movie. I think it's going to be abysmal, to be honest. I think it's going to be horrible. I think there's going to be a whole bunch of uh, pandering and agenda pushing and all this crap in there. That's just like just focus on the goddamn story for once. I, I think you're uh, you're very well justified in saying yeah, that. I don't think sure. there's many people out there suggesting that this will be a success. No, um, I mean, there's a there's a bunch. You know that are, but I wouldn't. It would be hilarious if, like, <laughs> if it happened. Like, they took a Ray movie made by a, a feminist activist documentary maker, and it turned out to be the best fucking like, Star amazing. Wars movie since Empire. I would hope so. <laughs> Somehow, I would hope so. I honestly, I don't, I don't pray for Star Wars' downfall. I hope it's going to be absolutely amazing because I want cool stories. But fuck, I don't see that happening, man. the The choreographer that they hired, I heard, has never even done choreography i think she was a stunt it's tough to that? call yourself a choreographer then uh, no she's like no she's a sword master or something she's like she, she's a oh. stunt she's a stunt actor or something but she has never actually choreographed actors well you like see that. ryan from what i don't be a bad choreographer maybe i'm wrong never done choreography that's true. That is that true. Is true. Got 100% you know, track well, record. Baby steps. You know, what I'll say, and then, and then I got to bounce, is that regardless, even if there's no identity politics involved, if there's none of that stuff, even if it doesn't like appear at all in the Ray movie, mm -hmm. the bottom line is that this is going to be a story about Ray, someone who's now usurped the name Skywalker, Ray Palpatine, who's usurped the name of Skywalker, doing what Luke Skywalker should have done. Yeah, dude. Rebuilding the new Jedi Order. So, quite frankly, if that is your approach, if that's your starting point, it could be the most woke-free movie, period. And yeah. I don't know if people are going to be very receptive to it. Oh, it pisses me off so um, much, dude. Make her a depressed yeah. hobo that everyone hates because they find out she's a Palpatine and the Palpatine destroyed the world and they earn a reputation through actually interesting and difficult things. If you have to make a fucking Ray movie. How about we don't, though? Yeah, you again, yeah. as we've said with so many of these other good ideas, they would never ever do that to Ray. She is Saint Ray of Dude, Saint Ray of they, Skywalker. I swear to God, if they team Ray and Ahsoka up to take down, like, you know, and Grogu, fuck it the up. patriarchy, <laughs> and Grogu, so tired. take down men, yeah, and Grogu, like, still can't speak. So she doesn't have to listen to a man. He just still has that robot that goes, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, literally. Yeah. She just affirm Ray at every point. Or, like, she's well, maybe if like enough. Grogu had grown up a little bit and become like a dude bro, like Ken from the Barbie movie. Like he's <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying Grogu. To like, yeah, trying yeah. to be like hyper masculine. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Yeah, you go. No, but with that being that. said, guys, I I got to bounce. I got some got some stuff going on today. But thanks for having me on. Good chat Definitely. about Thank Star you for coming Wars. On. I'll I'll see you at MegaCon, man. There you go. We'll see you in Orlando. I'll see the guy uh, right up here as well. Yeah, we'll I see you there also. 
looking forward to hanging with you guys. Yeah. Hell yeah, it's going to be a blast. IRL. Talk to you guys later. Later. Peace. Bye-bye. And then there were three. How many more are we going to (laughs) lose? Welcome to Open Bar. Uh Hey, let's just let's just hijack it. Yeah, the bar. You guys have your own show. Yeah, every Thursday. Oh, it's just you two. That's open. Well, we have guests. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right, cool. We're we're the two main hosts, and then we We talk mainly about how uh, it's going great. Anytime. That no, we did. Like we think we show fest. It's probably the next Star Wars thing that comes out will be the Acolyte, I would imagine. So, do we? Have, why do we have no dates? What's the deal? Uh, because they don't have any dates. No? They're like, I mean, I'm sure they do. I'm sure it bodes really well for the quality of the product. But when it does come out, it would be great to have you on, like, get your perspective on it. Anytime you want me on, get fun. Let me know. Yeah, let me know. Thanks, man. Do you? Are you in Orlando? Right now. Or is, this, is, this, <laughs> is this? Is this? Is this private information? No. What? I think no. he's thinking, can you not tell from his accent that he's not in Orlando? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe he's... he's good, There's he's plenty still, of yeah. people yeah, from right. overseas that live in... No, Biden. no. This will shock you, but I am in Scotland right now. But I am going to fly to Orlando for Megacon, so I will be there. Oh, so you're friends with Jack Jacksepticeye. He doesn't know who that is. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> I don't you know, know the is. most famous man in... in, in... Oh shit, is he, is he Irish? Irish? Oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last order. Let's just let's just end the stream right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Okay, cool. Uh nice. Sick. All right. Well, uh let's start reading some super chats, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Mahler, why aren't you coming to Orlando? Uh, I'll I'll do it eventually at some point. I just uh, I don't do meetups yet, so I'm probably gonna. I'm very tempted by all the stories. Mm. Yeah, they're fun. Should be good. Is um, have you been to MegaCon before? No. Drinker. I uh, know this is my first MegaCon. Apparently, it's quite Me big too. though, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, never been. Anybody here going to MegaCon? You can spam M. Oh fuck! Now I'm being called racist. There we go. Well. <laughs> racist right. to the Irish. Mag- misogynist Scottish. and racist in the same week cool sweet the long awaited meeting has come at last the circle is now complete when I left you I was sober now I am dead <laughs> 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 and our season 2 is officially set to resume filming rewatch Rogue One I think we'll be getting more Saw and delving into Galen Urso do you guys like Saw? Herrera oh, oh, no fine so much to say on him yet I way prefer yeah. um well, I, I wait for a lot of the characters in it. Yeah, but you know, maybe they can make him really interesting by the time we uh, get another season. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, you do have Forrest Whitaker playing him. Fucking exceptional actor, so hopefully we get yes. some Yes, for sure. Wish at least one guest would defend Star Wars. Hey, well, Star but... Wars Theory defended Star Wars. I think, I, I think, we, I think kind of. we all want good Star I don't think any of us hates well, we, the first six films. Brinker made us do a, an Andor section defending Star Wars. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, I tried to lighten the mood there. <laughs> you you know. I want that on record as well. I tried to like <laughs> yeah, because I, take I don't, the balance I don't, of this I don't screen. typically subscribe to the idea that like, if we spent the entire, if like 10 hours in a row being negative, I wouldn't be like, oh, now we need positive. We're like, no, fuck it. If they're going to keep putting out shit, then the, the responses will keep being shitty in terms of negative it's, Exactly. And it's like, oh, you're just negative about Star Wars now. It's like, no, I'm just candid about the Star Wars that's being put out. You don't see me being negative about the first six films. Well, yeah, and nobody... There's a difference. When when we did uh, Andor coverage on EFAP, it's not like anyone said, like, you need to bring on someone who hates Andor. Nobody said that. Like, yeah, because you don't, you don't have to. You don't have to have every single perspective. But yeah. anyway, still, I think all three of us are interested in the perspective of why would you adore the pre- uh, sequels? But I yep. mean, as time goes on, those perspectives are getting lesser and lesser available, and there's not much substance to them, other than like, yep. oh, I really loved, um, no, photography, the music, <laughs> <laughs> the score. Since Phantom Menace turns 25 old this year, do you think you will re-release? They'll re-release in theaters. Oh, that'd be cool. Love to see that. I haven't seen uh, yeah. it in theaters since I was a wee lad. That's- yeah, in a while. Wait, really? You haven't rewatched Phantom Menace? In theaters. Oh, in, in theaters. theaters. Right. In theaters, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, can you guys discuss your wish list of things you could fix through TV episodes to improve the story experience of the sequels? Example, Luke's Dark Empire story arc and where he behaves out of character. Uh, so what, like use TV shows to retroactively fix the sequel trilogy? Is that what they're asking? Uh, that's quite an effort for something yeah, that would be like, yeah. can we just decanonize them and make... <laughs> yeah. I mean... I, they invent first, time I, travel, they go back and they prevent the events of the sequel trilogy from happening. Luke wakes Easy. up from a bad dream. There you go. That's how it allows yeah. us in control his alternate timeline, but I'd want. Yeah, I mean, look, you could just have Luke have a run in with Snoke and the, the Empire or First Order, and uh, they want to clone him, and so he has to run off and cut himself off from the Force so they can't GPS his ass. That's. If you're going gonna to have it tie into the shitty sequels, then yeah, I guess. What else can you do? Tomorrow, Phantom Menace, PS1 video game comes out on PS4 and PS5. Have you played the game? No. I didn't play I that one. So. No. I don't want to make you guys uncomfy. Uh-oh. But I would love a Star Wars movie with a chick in it and her being lame. <laughs> Possibly gay as well. Most definitely gay. You guys should watch Nerdonymous videos on the production of The Force Awakens. It gives a lot of context for JJ's meddling. Channel is the guy who made the video debunking Star Wars saved in the edit. I'm an excellent old. channel. He has like fucking cool videos and he just did. They're all amazingly edited. I left a comment on one of them being like, please contact me. I'd like to speak to you about Star Wars, but uh, I anything from who are you? Who are you like a huge fan of? Like, let's say like you really like the way they uh, make their videos. Uh, break, break stuff down. My biggest influences would have been a guy called Retro Ahoy. All kinds of breakdown game reviews. His video, his review on Quake is like absolutely amazing. Uh, then Total Biscuit, who fortunately died. Um, um, right. But he was all about like integrity and uh, thoroughness. Held sort of analyses and, and owning the consumer when the companies providing you this shit were taking advantage of you. And then, um, I see. you know, for a funner aspect like Red Letter Media, I'd be inspired by and still enjoy, but more so for their chemistry and their comedy. Got it. And then there's there's a bunch of guys. I didn't want to name these people because it sounds a bit awkward, but you know that critical drinker guy's pretty cool. <laughs> 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 I, like, I like watching his stuff, you know. Um, yeah. What is wrong with you, Mo? I don't know. <laughs> Why would you watch my stuff? <laughs> need help of it. Well, apparently I gotta get you and Ryan off the show so I don't lose subscribers, but a handful of subscribers. Just tell them a big, handful. Big that's deal. Fine. Tell them at the end it's of the okay. episode. That's it. I'm getting rid of these toxic people. And at the beginning of the next episode, we have to go. Oh, I'm just having them on for a little bit, and then I'm getting rid of them. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll talk with who I want. You know, it's if if people are going to uns unsubscribe, that's totally fine. Don't yeah, worry. I feel the same way. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I'll go back down to a hundred thousand. To me, it makes no difference. I, as long as I'm happy making content, I make. It was only a matter of time before all these guys came together. I'm so glad for it. Keep it up. Thanks, bro. All in one show. I don't think Disney could handle this much Star Wars representation. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'd love it. I'm really excited for the four animated projects. Absolute all Star Wars panel. Cheers. That'd be cool if we had a panel, like a, at a convention. Oh, my yeah. God. We're going to be at MegaCon. You, did you buy your tickets yet? Tickets. To make fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's it's kind of taken care of. So, oh shit, you got media. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm going as like a an attendee, like a guest, I suppose. Yeah, basically. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So, like, oh. I usually go to these things. I'll have like a table and like I'll you know have things to sign and meet people. Oh, and what the do fuck? A few panel events. I didn't know this. That's so cool. No, it's good. Yeah, that's, that's swing by. We'll do stuff together. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I'll be there Saturday, Sunday. So. <laughs> uh, good thing we didn't read that one. I know Ryan's hot step sister. <laughs> Personally, I prefer the alternate cut of the Force Awakens. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to investigate this one further. Yeah. Mandalorian movie will be a Bo Katan movie. I don't think so. I don't think so. Disney can't kill Grogu. He's the best selling merchandise they've got. If they kill him, they have nothing. Yes. Just make him older. I th I, I really think making him older would be really cool. They want to do that? I, I don't. 
I just can't picture like a teenage Yoda. I think I they think be like they've cracked Ninja the formula Turtles. where a bunch of our characters get into an unwinnable situation and then uh, baby Yoda as known back in the day pulls out an amazing power that saves the day. Yeah. You have choir, you have slow mo, and you zoom into his cute face and people are just like yeah. you know, it's it's like a meme, but when we're on streams with uh, some of the, the some of the more um uh, some of the women in the, uh, the in the spheres we're in, and whenever you bring up Baby Yoda, they all like get giddy. You're like, that's it right there. That's the the, there must be some was... kind of weird hormones getting fired off in their brains when that happens. But well, unfortunately, yeah, there I are think some the guys point... who have that reaction too. It's like... I say something, but yeah, yeah the, the, I think the bit where I just lost all hope was when he's running around that light fixture, and like the yeah. guys are trying to like zap oh, him with God. the. the... Uh <laughs> just I wanted to stop. And what you'll get is they'll be like, no, well, hopefully. And he does a force thing, and then they go, yeah. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit too silly. Give me back sure. Anakin killing children. Come on. Yeah, Anakin shows up. He's like, I missed one. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, a, a teenage Grogu would be really cool. Um, give him a nose ring. You know, whatever. Go all out. <laughs> It would be like the Ninja Turtles, and they're extremely successful. What are they worth? Billions? You know, I think, yeah, people would love it. Or give him a brother. You know, oh, he has a long lost brother somewhere. He's old. Mando movie, just John Wick, but Baby Yoda's the dog. Yeah, uh, kill him. Sure. Damn. Kill the He's on a vengeance trip. Damn, dude. <laughs> Damn. Mando frozen in carbonite meets Grogu a couple hundred years later. Oh, shit. Okay. That's not bad. But then there's like how we're having to f solve the problem of them making baby Yoda fucking young. He can move everything around. Yeah, but what's the, how how late's the Ray movie after Mando? Is that 20 years? No. More than that, because it's 15 years, years after. It's the 45 years. Oh, he's, he's going to be 100. He's going to be 100 years old. Whole build. Hey, Theory, did you see the clip of um, Grace Randolph talking about what, how to fix, like, Oh, God. those sorts of era of movies and who we should bring in and she says they should bring in oh. Obi-Wan and then she thinks, Wait, what? For, she thinks for a few seconds and goes oh no he's dead <laughs> Wait no no no, no. Hold, hold on Wait, she said what? She said that we need to get some like cameos in you know we need to get some more people in more famous people into these next projects and she suggests Obi-Wan Kenobi and then she's like oh wait he's dead <laughs> It is almost physically <laughs> painful to listen to Grace Randolph talk. Not just it's for like, like the inane content of what she says, but just how she says it as it's well. It's one of the most like, famous moments in all of Star Wars. And she was like, Oh yeah, he died. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't I don't I have to I don't know who that is. I've heard of her a few times. Isn't she like a leaker or something? At this a point, essentially hated by like the entire internet. Her clips get shared every once in a while of her just saying something that's so fucking bad. Really? Who is she? I don't even know what she looks like. Uh I think she's like an AI that went rogue, oh, man. but like not like a Google. super advanced one, like kind of a, a primitive one. And she just spouts the most ridiculous nonsense. He said that she's... Mario she's... had a cat outfit to satisfy the Asian fairies. <laughs> she's blonde. I've never seen her. It's a strange. Man, you're missing a treasure trove there. <laughs> yeah, I've never, never come across her. Is she on Twitter, I guess? Um, the Suicide Squad theory. No, nope. uh, uh, the original, like the first, like the no, the James Gunn one. That's the one with Will Smith. No, uh, the the one Idris Elba. with yeah. No. Okay, well, no. there's a giant starfish monster in it, and he's crushing the populace of a like an island. And she said when reviewing it that her complaint was it didn't crush enough white people. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> That is the correct response. Too many people of color were crushed and there should have been more white people getting killed. Well, it was taking place in a Central American country. Like, yeah, like I said, we cover every once in a while. We actually we have a laugh riot. She's uh, she's a bit... Yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of someone I, I, I knew once. They said um, white men had a good run. I was like... Hmm. Reminds me nice. of the Ricky Gervais joke from last hosting of the Golden Globes where he said uh, we were going to do an in memoriam but it wasn't diverse enough <laughs> <laughs> they actually they actually said that in the movie 
She didn't kill enough white people? No, no, no. She said it in a review of the movie. Who did? Grace Randolph. Grace Randolph. She's white. Yeah, well, <laughs> she's saying it because it would be more balanced to, to, to have killed more white people. Oh, my goodness. Oh, sure, she's one of those. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. Oh, yeah, there you go. That picture looks familiar. Uh, could you have this alcoholic Scot Scotsman on the show? I thought he's an Irishman. Maybe we just discussed that. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I would never. For you, have... I can be. <laughs> I'm sorry, I never would have seen in public with him or take a picture with him. Then make it my profile picture on social media. <laughs> Maybe one day. Good shit. Good signs. <laughs> I find it easier to imagine Anakin in the suit without the cape, since the cape is what makes him look big. But it would be easier for you guys to see Anakin in the suit without the cape. Um, would make no difference. Yeah, I'm not really too bothered by that. No. Grogu should have been killed by Vader during 66. I think we can all agree the Disney stuff broke canon with OG Trilogy. Uh, yeah. Yes. It, it's so Just a little bit. <laughs> Forget Grogu. Grogu can escape Reva. What? She actually got stabbed Why as a kid. He... Yeah, I think Obi-Wan was probably the most egregious of all the TV shows for breaking canon. That was just there's there's stuff in that that I just can't even rationalize in the, the context of the OT. Nope. Not at all. How would you suggest watching Star Wars in which order to someone who never really watched it but only knows a few things about it? I personally you know, like you, four, five, six, one, two. Release three, orders, five. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, like, you know the movie that starts with one? Or like the, you know, part one and then go to part <laughs> what two. Do you mean, like, Chris? Chris? It's called part four. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how George wants you to watch it, but he says, you know, you're going to get two totally different experiences. I made a video yeah. on this a while ago that with one, two, three, four, five, six, when you get to the part where Luke is told that Vader is his father, you get a totally different experience than if you were watching four, five, six, one, two, three. So True, yeah. he was saying, uh, I'm paraphrasing, in four, five, six, first, you are essentially, you're surprised. And then in. One, two, three, four, five, six, you're anticipating it. Like you're waiting, like when is he going to tell him? Because you know. So it's it's a different watching experience. I think it would be fascinating though, like if you could wipe your memory somehow and then just yeah. watch them in order to get the, the that completely different perspective on the story. Yeah. You know, like what would it change your perception of what it is? I don't know. Interesting to think about though. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, chat, which one would you guys prefer? And while you're here, 6,000 of you, make sure you hit the like button and uh, show support. I agree I'm over Grogu. I remember watching season three when he ran and jumped. It looked bad and strange. Bad and cringe. The baby sounds made me roll my eyes. He could be, he should be CGI if he's jumping. Disney want to please normies. Um, yeah, I think the there was a thing about practical versus CGI, right? The the clip I always use to criticize is in Ando season two. I don't know if you remember it. What do you Grogu down in the ship when they fight off the spiders and he's literally on like a motorized wheels. He wiggles mm -hmm. forward really awkwardly. And oh I god! Just like, <laughs> I remember you know what that. It is it's like they they got the baby doll and they were like, "Man, this is so much easier, cheaper, and faster than doing CG right now. Just fucking do it." And some guy was just like, "Yeah, I'll wind him up and let him go and record it. That's good enough. It's gonna be a quick shot." And I think it's just traveled on throughout the seasons it's just like look i, I remember you know the, one of the last shots of them in season three where they're walking through the cantina whatever building the yeah. people we were laughing at it some people were comparing it favorably to team america like oh, no. oh that's fun it's fun walking like in team america and it's like motherfucker oh, no. team america is supposed to be making fun of shit puppetry it's like yeah, literally skilled yeah. puppetry to look shitty why would why? I, <clears throat> I think i, I think did give it that. i did give it some credit in the sense of i always assumed they were going for the aesthetic of something that was made in the era of the ot in which case you know there would be a lot of just puppetry and practical effects like it's like that fake um, feeling of it being a show that was contemporary with the OT. Because, like, money was clearly not an issue to them. They can obviously... Say. But, like, yeah, it, it's... Whether or not it works uh, is debatable. Again, like, it kind of looks ridiculous in a lot of cases. But I think that was their intention behind it. I just... Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know how well it carries over. I don't know either. 
Mahler, I watched the Nerdonymous video last week and found it very informative. I also recommend his Star Wars Apocrypha videos as they have good insight into what happened with the sequels and you even make a cameo. Wait, shit, I do? But again. Okay, yeah, <laughs> well, it's so funny. I'm practically recommending it to myself now. But yes, check out that, vi that video in that channel. Apparently, I'm going to do the same because I haven't seen all of it yet. <laughs> That'd be cool. A few weeks ago, the doctor of God, the director of Godzilla One, tweeted he wanted to do a Star Wars movie. What do you fellows think of Dave flying out the director of Godzilla and screening a movie with the whole look? So, yeah, you know, everyone, my opinion on it, uh, boys, I don't know what you think, but um, everyone wants to direct a Star Wars movie. Everybody and their grandma, you know, why wouldn't you want to put that on your resume? But are you fit to direct a Star Wars movie? Are you fit to write a Star Wars movie? And that's what we need to be asking. It's like, you know, of course, everyone wants to do it. Yeah. With the um the rubble analogy from Drinker, I think the bombed out house, I do kind of get to the point of if several people walk up to this rubble and say, give me a few bricks and I can make something. I think most of them might just bomb the bricks again, but some of them might actually build a small house. And it's like, oh, okay. And then we can give more to that person. In a sense, I guess what I'm saying is I think Star Wars has been so ravaged that I'm almost at the point of saying, pass it out to a bunch of people and see if we can find somebody. Yeah. I would be curious to see what happened at that screening when they saw Godzilla and it was <laughs> almost that weird realization of, oh, wait, these are characters I, I don't, I that have personalities to... and go on journeys. I would love to talk Crazy. to like a Filoni after he's seen that and ask yeah. him what. Hope everyone enjoys this training. May the force with you. Love you all. I'll clean a bit. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sure. saying, if Filoni watched something like Minus One, I would love to talk to him about the main character and how he perceives how that was written, how the arc occurs, and then talk to him about his own characters and be like, why don't you try to maybe replicate it at all with like what you did in the Joker, for example? Because um, I mean, I'm sure he thinks he does, but I'd love to understand him better because I just don't see it in his work, uh, even though he can clearly recognize it. I assume better works because one... Really great blueprint for a character arc. Yeah, I completely zoned out. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The people Let's, at home uh, heard me, in theory. Yes, they did. They, I yeah. was listening, Mauler. They need to get rid of that stupid Naboo fighter, Ship 2. I think, I think it's dope. At least the Razor Crest made... You know what pissed me off about the Razor Crest was they did a limited release, and it was like four or 500 bucks for the ship. And I ordered one from Hasbro, and then the next week they blew it up. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it makes it even more collectible <laughs> yeah, now. More of a collectible. <clears throat> but, yeah, like, with so. this, yeah, I get it. Like, if you're a bounty hunter, you might need to transport your bounty back, and like the Naboo fighter's got no space. Oh, I'm willing inside to argue it. the Naboo fighter is an absolutely retarded choice outside of a cool factor. Only thing is. Yeah, well, I mean, just like bringing back Luke, bringing back Anakin, it's like another thing that we recognize. Absolutely, that was a cynical reason for it. The fucking, it makes, it, when you watch the first episode of Mandalorian, he things, and you're like, of course. Oh yeah, he would have that. Ah, oh, that's how that works. Ah, oh, cool. And the exchange of money, the way the carbonite works, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you get this, you're like, wait, this doesn't fulfill any of the things you need, Mando. And it's like, don't worry, it's got a pod for Grogu. Like, if it's, need a little bit more than that, mate. Let me ask some. If, they hit you up and they said, free range, you can do whatever you want. You create one show, one movie, one game, whatever. What would you do? One movie. Uh, okay. Then I need to know if I'm allowed to decanonize anything. Yes and not. Uh, no, you can just do whatever. You can uh, literally do what you want. In terms this is of the of... tough part where I could use the movie to do retcon, or I could use the movie to stay away from everything they've ruined and just start up my own shit, you know what I mean? I'm not sure. I would be very tempted to set it right after the sequels and basically undo everything the sequel did. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> that would be very tempting. Or set it right yeah. before Force Awakens and release a toxic gas into the entire universe that makes everybody <laughs> behave weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would make sense. Like everyone's super high. Uh, they need to get rid of the... Oh, right about this one. <clears throat> People hating on Filoni is wild. He's not bad. I like Filoni. I know. I mean, I know. like, I know. yeah. I'm gonna, I mean, I'll, I'll probably have to drop out fairly soon. But um, fair enough. Yeah, I think the perception really is like he's a bit of a hack who's totally overrated, and he seems to have just gone into business for himself completely. Like he's got his like stable of characters that he loves, and he's just mm -hmm. going to make them the center of everything. 
um, and it just screams of narcissism a little bit and being a little bit selfish as a, a creative. What would you have him do then? Resign. Fuck. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or go back to, I don't know, go back to doing animated shows for kids. Yeah, um, animated shows are amazing. Maybe that's that's where his strength lies and like that level of storytelling is like his limit and leave the, the more um, important stuff to serious filmmakers, I suppose. Yeah, it kind of goes hand in hand with this super chat here. Theory seriously, you got to have stop tr treating Dave like he's George Lucas 2.0 because he isn't. As long as KK is in charge, nothing will change that. So not even the issue is not even KK. It's KK and uh, Disney, Bob, all of them, Robert, all of them, wipe them. All. Uh, hail <laughs> uh, what's up man hey theory big fan I agree that Star Wars has always been progressive with showing powerful women but it does lack women centered stories 90% of Star Wars movie show posters centers a white male which proves the point against yours uh, yeah I don't think the problem is the gender I think the, the problem is good storytelling that's I mean, I, I would say, like, with, with since Disney have taken over, like, it's all three of female. the mainline movies have been female centric, obviously, with Ray. You got yeah. Jin Erso in Rogue One. So that's four out of the past five movies that they've made have been female centric. Well, You've got they the had Ahsoka Hans show. Walker in the... <laughs> the, yeah. Um, yeah. That was what it was. That wasn't the film that made them stop making movies or anything. It's yeah. fine. You know, you had Ahsoka, but then you also had things like Obi Wan Kenobi, which is hypothetically about him, but it's not really. It's about Reva and, oh, Reva. and Leia, oh, yeah. and so even the ones that are meant to be about men aren't really. And, not. and so you, you could kind of make the argument like I feel like they've addressed, they've redressed the balance and a lot more over well, the past few years. Why don't we just take this kind of thinking further? Fuck men, fuck women. Let's have a robot main character. Let's have a crazy alien main character. Sure. sure. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. If that's yeah. the focus, when really none of that matters compared to nailing a fucking story, which is a big problem there. Yep. I know. It's too much about gender. Like, fucking... Ah, God. I, I don't know. It's like nobody understands it. Cancel Disney+. Plus. Theory, Arnold T is on. Send him a link. No, we're good right now, man. We're, we're chilling. We're vibing. Love Arnold. I hope the fan base doesn't show up for the Ray movie. We'll get a portion of it, but uh, I think it ends well. Of course, of course, they'll show up because they want to see how bad it is, right? So it doesn't matter. And in, in terms of Disney's eyes, they're like, "Well, they're going to be paying anyways." A movie ticket's a movie ticket. You get the money. So. Uh, I feel like myself and Drinker and erotic type audiences—they're not going to go see this until we tell them all. This is weird. But part of our channel's like um, responsibility at this point, trying to save the bit of their fucking wallets from having burning holes in it. And um, it'll mean a lot if ever we did recommend it, but you know, the likelihood is not high. And a lot of people are going to be waiting for our assessments of it. The, the new meme across a lot of top comments and a lot of reviews nowadays is way more anticipate the reviews than the movie. Yep. The entertainment factor in reviews is much higher, much more consistent, much more reliable. Right. Well, down to earth. No, I'm I'm going to see all of them, so I can definitely have a review on it right away. I want to like when I'm walking out of the theater, I'm probably going to be like, well. I mean, I'll see it. I, I might not necessarily go into a theater to see it, but... Well, you know. and oh, I on that note, uh, if I myself, uh, Brinker, Theory, and Gary, and everyone else recommended uh, the newest Star Wars film wholeheartedly, there's still a huge portion of the audience who would be like, I ain't watching it. Fucking interesting. If you recommend it. That's how much damage they've done. Yep. Yep, I don't disagree. They announced the movie to take the heat off of SOC's comments. I'm excited for the Mando movie. Yeah, it did seem pretty uh, strategic. I'm excited for the Mando movies and Ahsoka season two. Criff, you Filoni and Ahsoka haters. Yeah, Criff, you guys. I, I genuinely, look, I'd love to see an Ahsoka defender. You know, this was quality storytelling. Oh, for sure she's going to appear. Of course. She's probably going to be in the Ray movie. 
Drink, Mauler, Ryan. Did you guys watch the Ahsoka jailbait video? The one with Obi Wan. Okay. <laughs> well, about the meme video. That was funny. The Fuck. they use AI and shit to make it. it, it... People have the right to voice up. KK agenda. Sequels: Ray lead, Rogue One, Jin Erso lead, Kenobi, Reva, Mando season three, Bo Katan, Ahsoka. Everyone. KK. Yep. True. I know, and it's like plain in sight. Star Wars started and made an inclusion of nerds of it and made a fan base. Disney strives for inclusion, but they are trying to do that with something that has had that with tons of outsiders. Sad time. No, they're trying to do that with inclusion of their own political people. Right? They're not trying to do that with everyone. I, I swear to God, like the, the worst thing that ever happened to geek culture is that it went mainstream and it became cool. And I could use that in quotation it's, marks, but like it became trendy to call yourself a geek, and it yeah, just let it. in so many fucking idiots and tourism. Man. I hate it, dude. Fuck yeah, shit. and it's like if you come in and your first thought is I need to like alter this hobby or this um, fan base or whatever to make it more um, acceptable to me, then you're yeah. you're not a fan. You're just like Mueller says, you're a tourist or you're you're an activist. Yeah, and that's that's all you've become, and like. You get enough of them in a fan base and they just slowly but surely like hollow it out and destroy it. And this is what's essentially happened to everything because when you get stuff like this that then becomes uh, designed to be catered to a mainstream audience, uh, everything just gets generic. You know, everything becomes like the most safe, corporatized garbage imaginable. You know, it started with The Force Awakens, but then. It, it happened with Star Trek as well. It happened before that, even. You know, when J.J. Abrams took over, they they turned it into action adventure movies in space with a young cast of characters that just happened to have the Star Trek name, and it bore no relation to the the ethos of the the show, the previous movies, any of the TV shows, anything like that. It was just wearing it like a skin suit, and it just happened again and again, and it won't stop. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, and on that cheerful note, gentlemen, <laughs> I might have to bid you farewell because I'm kind of out of time this evening. Well, thanks, thanks for sharing your time with us, man. I appreciate it. I hope we uh, chat soon. If not, we'll I'll see you at MegaCon, which is where you live, not in um, Ireland. No, I live in Ireland, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's uh, it's been a pleasure to come on tonight. Um, yeah. you know, Mueller, uh, you and I have you know streamed once or twice before, so that's nice. Uh, and theory, yeah, it's great to be. In, you know, meet up Great with you publicly you. and do this. Yeah. You know, it's been good yeah. fun. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll I haven't soon, like, man. hopefully I haven't ruined your stream too much um, with all the the negativity. But um, yeah, keep doing what you're doing, man. Um, yeah. It's great to see you reaching out to like so many different people from you know different perspectives and so on. So it's really yeah. good stuff. No, I respect all you guys. So yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for your time. All right, we'll, right, we'll catch you guys later. All right, yeah. later. It's cool. He has a panel. I didn't know you could do that. But it's all like vendors and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to see, talk to him about it. Maybe find out more about it. But I, I don't know anything about how this stuff works. I always figured yeah. like if I went to one of these, awesome to do. A... Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be sick. You should come. Just fly out, man. Just wear a mask. Wear, wear a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Baloney isn't bad. Why do y'all hate? It's Disney. Ryan, I was unaware of you before Theory's last show were on. After, to my surprise, my best friend was sub to you, but he's dumber than a bag of hammers. You bring the energy. He does. He, Ryan's, Ryan's very emotional. It's great. He's very pissed off, usually. I was <laughs> half expecting so could have an intense romance with Filoni's self-insert character, Trapper Wolf. Mahler, how you doing for time? Coming yeah, up on well, two hours now. I'll try and, uh, we'll see how far we get. I'll try and get through the Super Chat. We're at, we have 164, we're at 2.27 p.m., and right now it's 3.59 p.m. So we have uh, an hour and a half of Super Chats that are unaccounted for. Well then, uh, let's give it a best shot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can go through it for you if you like, but uh, you do your thing. Uh, now would be a good time for Von Rum to drop his, oh, weird that you say that, yeah. Moral of the story, plot points, and story elements that work for a children's cartoon don't really work for live action. Space wheels and all that. I don't like to do that too much. There's a lot of kids made content that I consider the best like films of all time. But like kids deserve a 
bit more respect and like uh they can throw space whales and dumb shit into that but not into adult stuff make space whales work in adult stuff all about context i think yeah yeah i guess so lando series to be basically solo 2 yeah what's up with the lando series i don't know is it still the last we hit on that i don't know nothing could be good honestly star wars is done unless another company buys it well no i just gotta wake up just gotta wake up a little bit i've watched some of it i've watched all oh, of it you... <laughs> I, specifically no, no, dude, into... I don't know why people think that like i'm not like one of these intolerant no it's not about intolerance people. like we disagree i think a bit on what happened in fight, which is totally fine no, of, of because i'm to i'm totally capable of being able to see why you would think that Okay, fair but enough. for me, I'm just like, oh, cool, it's Anakin, dope. Okay, this and this and this. So my thing is like, literally, I, I literally, I don't want to say fix it, but I come up with the theories, and that's that's how I, honestly, can cope through it. Right, so it's like whatever they do, I'll shape shift and like maneuver, and I'll be like, well, I, I could figure out why they would do this because of this and this and this. So let's write it this way. Whereas if I were to write it, it would be completely different. But I just essentially try to fit in the holes that they couldn't um, explain. So that's why, for me, things make sense. But uh, otherwise, like, if I were to write it originally, no. No way, I would, no way would I write it like that. Our reactions would have been at least somewhat different. Because to me, it was like the end, permanently, of Star Wars watching that. I figured that this and the celebration of it, the ape, the assumption that we just drop Anakin into it, drop Vader, fine. I feel like we'll see more of him going forward, but not in a way that I want to see. Characterized, right. substantive, dropping him in. Him. Hmm. Okay, it's my favorite grifters. Anyway, how do you guys feel about the new Superman movie for James from James Gunn? Any hope, or is DC destined to always be low Marvel? Hard to say with that one. Uh, I can believe that Gunn is going to put a hell of a lot of effort into the man's job. I don't know. Judging from his past work, a lot of people would say like he's not a person who makes but at the same time I like to give artists a try at not done before we've gotten plenty of great stuff from artists that are not familiar with I think though if it's bad that is going to annihilate uh, the new DC canon mm -hmm. got to start off not even just good he needs to start off great yeah shining beacon of yeah Baloney has a life-size, fully functional Ahsoka doll in his bedroom. He oh, no. Oh, no. How do you know that George wanted Ahsoka to die? What are his personal... Well, he said that. P.S. Ryan's Filoni impression stinks. Jason <laughs> from Rebel Force Rated is a much better impression of him. Well, well he, he... Dave Filoni literally said that. As everyone knows that George wanted Ahsoka to die. So... He was pissing all I just watched a <laughs> fucking video of <laughs> him saying that. I uh, strongly recommend The Clone Wars does not hold up from Sheev Talks. As someone who used to think The Clone Wars has some of the best Star Wars material, this is a fair critical breakdown of the series. I haven't seen it. We're going to go through it, though. We will. The, the 2D. Hey, y'all, just graduate. Oh, so, uh, dude, I'm leaving tomorrow, by the way. So I'm going to be... Gone for how long? I don't know. I don't have a return ticket yet. Oh. I'm not sure how long I'll be gone for. Well, um, I mean, that's okay, right? Or yeah, just... I mean, I could always do streams <laughs> on the road. <laughs> not a big deal. Yeah, like even on my phone. So it's all good. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. Um... Graduated from Air Force basic training. Congratulations. Great to see I've got two months of great podcasts to catch up on. Love seeing these crossovers. Awesome. Hey, congrats, man. Thanks for your service. Just want to say hi to the biggest Dave Filoni fan, the great Ryan Kennel. Thank you, Malik, for the big super chat. Happy Misogyny Monday. <laughs> uh, that, was the, that was the other title for the podcast, Misogyny Monday. Misogyny Monday. That should be a good one. Maybe next week. It might die down by then. Red Dwarf has a character with a relationship with a robot, but pretty, yeah, whatever. Uh, Star Wars is not for the old white guys that grew up with it. Get over it. Kathleen Kennedy reasoning. Yeah. 
Yeah, what did uh, what that woman say? I'm not gonna worry about what a white man has to say from a wrinkle of time or something. Oh, oh Brie Larson. Yeah, Why Brie did Larson. she say that? <laughs> wrinkle of time was terrible. Like, mm. yeah, well, you're white. <laughs> it's like okay. literally, literally. I'm interested to see if Mahler's view on Ahsoka changes after he watches the Clone Wars. I hated her like at the beginning then find myself liking her at the end. It was surprising. As far as I'm aware, that is the feeling a lot of people had about her over the years. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, like, annoying. the forecast is not great, considering there's a lot of people who I tend to agree with a lot who did not like the Clone Wars at all. There's right. one guy I'd be curious to get on um, a Star Wars <sighs> episode. But, um, sure, who? Uh, a friend of mine called... Uh, very analytical and watched all of the Clone Wars. I, I don't know what kind of conversations we could spark, but yeah. not a fan of basically the whole show. I'm down. But maybe it'd be better I'm not once a fan I've of the whole show. More of it. Okay. Do a good Obi Wan Anakin movie when the fans back. Uh, they could just do an Anakin show with the Clone Wars. Yep. I, I said that once it got clipped, and they're like, "We already have that in the Clone Wars." Yeah, but it's animated. Yeah, no, I uh, I think I told you before, but I've seen people try to clip you out for that. It's so weird, because it's like, well, it's, it's Hayden Christensen. There are, there are other stories to explore in the Clone Wars, but there's also just, yeah, you could adapt some of the animated ones into live action. You could yeah, adapt whenever... some of the live action stuff into anime. It, it's not to diminish animation, and it's not to prop up live action. It's just an alternative storytelling uh, avenue. Perspective, that's all, with live action. I, you know, but... Yeah, I mean, every, everybody who takes clips of me just completely takes them out of context all the time, and then they run with it. You said this. Well, no, why don't you actually refer to the clip? No, but you said it. But I didn't. Well, no, but you... Go watch the fucking clip. The whole thing. ...of started lying. said, like, these guys won't like Star Wars even if it's good. Like, I liked Andor. <laughs> I don't understand. I've, I've stand for Andor all the time. That's... Yeah. You can't cure stupid. Appreciate that you guys, particularly Mauler, stay out of politics, but I think without understanding the underlying culture and philosophy that has captured our institutions, you will always... And I guess we'll get part, part two. two in a little bit. Part two here. Underestimate the way that these institutions have been captured and the coming generations of writers will be funneled into this worldview. Yeah, of course they will. Um, we are the last generation that are... I would say normal. I was going to say, like, the when I do assessments of things, I do my very best to judge it on its absolutely own merit. However, when we speculate about the future, when we talk about news, or when creatives say certain things, obviously it's all based about surrounding contexts. Yeah. Yeah, it's, Im it's impossible to separate every event of Earth from every single thing a person thinks and feels about release. So I understand that. But it finally comes out, I'm like, all right. And block everything out and just take it for what it is. Try and be as fair to it as possible. Hasn't been great results. No, it hasn't, but you know, everyone's got an opinion, I suppose. Awesome to see some of your favorite YouTubers talking about Star Wars together. What's up, Nino? When I was a kid, I remember staring at the cover of Battlefront 1 and thinking how dope it is and badass. It's soft and it's for libs and little <laughs> girls. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> What the fuck? That's fucking switched up, man. What? <laughs> it's soft and for little girls. What the hell? Damn, Battlefront fans uh, on Suicide Watch right now. I can't believe Star Wars Think Theory and Link Trinker are collaborating. This is awesome. Which one of you reached out to each other first? Why well, Mahler put us together? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I feel like you know the network spread a bit better when we just hey just have a chat. Why? Break yeah, why ice. not? <clears throat> Literally. He's like a little matchmaker. I mean, you know, like, what even what even made us talk? It was, uh, I think you put out a tweet asking the people to talk to about... People who come on, then, who want to talk shit. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and I was and like, I don't really want to talk shit, but I'll talk to you. Know, <laughs> and everyone was like, Mauler, Mauler. I'm like, I'm like, oh, fuck, who's this? And then <laughs> you came on and I had my guard up. And then I was like, oh, you're actually dope. And then now we have our show. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I never know how. Other than Altana. 
No, you don't. You don't. Um, irrelevant. I was going to play it, but I just found it now, so. Make a match, make a make me a match. Find me a find. Catch me a catch. So that's you, me, and Drinker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what kind of story would you tell if Ray was the villain of the new movie? Uh, mm. I wouldn't. Just making her the villain is a little bit difficult to do, like from the offset. I mean, she's not not like um, some of the other characters. You know, like more applicable to Marvel, but there are some characters who are quote unquote heroes, but that you look at everything they do and you're like, man, that's just a straight up bad guy. Uh, Captain Marvel is a really good example power like her own gain all the time the newest mm. movie the marvels like everything you look at all her actions they're all to benefit her only so it's kind of easy to slip her into a villain role mm. ray ray is very boringly good they yeah. have much going on in terms of a character other than i will I will do what's right for the whole world all the time getting her into a villain is difficult you know the whole like dark side ray fuck that one that was bullshit they should adapt EU series of books of the Yuzon Vong invasion. Luke, Mera, the new Jedi, and the rest of the heroes. In my opinion, it would kick ass. Yeah, that would be very nice. But they won't do that. If you don't get rid of Mahler and Ryan, mean a handful of others. Oh, yeah, right. All right, <laughs> go ahead. Be my guest. Thanks for the search. What's up, Morgoth? Cheers, everyone. May the Force be with you. You too, Craig. A faithful adaptation of the Darth Bane trilogy would bring a host of fans back. Yes. But, you know, would they, you know, faith, exactly. Loser subscribers leaving is good. Better ones come. Yeah, I, I don't, my goal isn't to have the most subscribers. My goal is to have people that want to watch my videos. That's, that's it. So, you know, whether I have 3 million or 2 million or 1 million or fucking 500, you know, as long as I have a nice community of people that are like-minded and appreciate someone that can speak freely and not lie to you, then great. Awesome. Fuck Disney. Shout out to this group of four goats. Can we just see someone actually not survive a lightsaber? <laughs> 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 Maybe someday if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. Literally. If you had all to choose a lightsaber color, what would you choose? Uh, green. Have you read Vader and the Lost Command? Yep, it's one of the better Legends Vader comics. You should do a breakdown. I have, dude. I have. I've done that. You go watch the videos. Go watch the comic videos. I think I was one of the first on YouTube to do a full, full breakdown of it and do the voices and the sound effects and the music. It was really fun making that one. Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison is my favorite, though. I followed everyone here for years, but it all started with Star Wars Theory. Really love when you guys come together. I'm probably at Mauler commitment on Star Wars. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thanks, gents. How are they effing up every show? The lore is there. Talk about blueprints all the time. People have come before them making things. How to make a... No, I know better. Yeah. Everyone knows better, I suppose. They should do a show about Imperial Intelligence, best part of Andor, where the Imperials are the heroes fighting for law and order. It could be interesting to have morally good characters working as part of the Empire trying to bring order in a way that's viable instead of just like the... I was trying to play at that a little bit, but the part of Gaz side of things doesn't seem... I think they go in the way of being like, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. What's up, Matthew? Nice looking beard. When I was in grade school, teachers would have unruly kids stand with their nose and toes touching the wall in timeout. Filoni needs this. <laughs> the one of the teachers at my elementary school got sued for that because she had him do that to the wall, but then rub his nose against the wall, and the wall was abrasive. So he ended up cutting his nose and sued them. Fell in love with Star Wars at four years old watching the Death Star attack. I feel Disney Star Wars lacks space battles except Rogue One. It's not essential like good writing, but don't you guys miss this too? I do, of course, yeah, but that's not, you know... Ugh. I miss the lightsabers and the Force too, but we don't get... 
at least you know the choreography isn't the same as it doesn't feel the same. Yeah, it I was just, gonna say it's not that they know. lack space battles, heck, good space. Space battles throughout all the sequels. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, reading the big super chat from I Love Jet Trooper. Big hunter bucks. Glad to see Theory starting to realize the process of character assassination, subversion, and demoralization has all been deliberate and strategic on the part of these people. Have you been introduced to the Yuri Bezmanov yet? He explains what's been going on to a T. No, I don't know who that is. It's not like you? this is new to you, right? Like assassination, subversion, and demoralization, so to speak, in terms of writing. It's just. Of course not. Got less and less patience for it as time goes on. I don't have patience for it anymore. In in the beginning, it wasn't it wasn't like I never saw it. I saw it, but I thought that there must be some sort of a reason for it. That like you know, so I'd come up with different theories and stuff. Hence the channel, the literal point of the channel. And uh, you realize that that's it's just not the case. That they just don't even know what they're doing. Eventually, you wake up and you realize, okay, yeah, it's not really like I thought. Finally got around to watching O3 Clone Wars, and I hate 80% of that show. <laughs> I can't believe people prefer O3 over O8. Jedi Shaggy and Superman Mace Windu knuckleballing droids. Brawling droids broke me. I thought it was dope. Jedi Shaggy. I think he means... Does he mean Obi-Wan? Jedi <laughs> Shaggy. <laughs> oh, God. You guys remember the 501st Journal of the OG Battlefront 2 game? Yeah, Tamor Morrison is a hell of a narrator. Imagine a movie about that. Absolutely. Those little clips on their own would have been enough to make it that good. Yep. Yeah. I know. Like the go-to... Was it Mustafar? And there's a there's like a... An ocean that's powered up the droid manufacturers. But a... Kill him and destroyed army that's been fire. And in Battlefront 2, I didn't go that far. It's all in the 501st campaign. Oh, there's so many cool little ideas they had. Yet. Or did I? Yeah, it's pretty dope. I'm like, yeah, they're going to copyright me as well, as always. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a gay actor, Michael Douglas, and I like Star Wars. <laughs> What? Michael Douglas is a big fan of Star Wars, yeah. Is this an inside joke? I mean, there's a guy who super chats us all the time on you have say beginning with I'm gay actor Michael Douglas and they say something <laughs> <laughs> supposed to make sure you know. Yeah. Favorite pod and racer of mine is Gascano with his Ord Pedrovia. He finished in second place in the Muta Eve race from episode one. Um I forgot what's his name. Um his shit blew up. I forgot it. Most of them blew up, right? What is his name? I gotta find it. Pod race blow up guy. Oh, there he is. Ben Quadraneros. I liked him the most. He looked like the caterpillar from A Bug's Life. I know you're kept eating. Yeah. Much respect for the Vader film. I do like it, but when I see Vader in costume hugging Padme, it kills me. I'm very sorry. Yeah, no worries. That was, uh, yeah, there won't be any of that in the season in uh, two or three. No worries. The dream. Remember when R2 almost murdered 3PO in episode two? Yep. <laughs> when he pushed him off the ledge, you mean? <laughs> I thought he was going to about to shoot him and take his head. Wait, in episode two? Back of the clones, right? Oh, yeah, when he pushed him off the ledge. <laughs> I remember this, this, those people are just like, why the fuck did R2 do that? It's like, I guess. He's just tired of his ass. <laughs> it was like. He was one of them to drop in the things. Like, you got to go in this thing. Yeah, but what happened to Z3? I know. His head got freaking put on a B1. Much love to you all. Star Wars can use some love. Less hate amongst fans nowadays. My son and I can use some advice as we are starting a small Star Wars review page. Anything helps and is much appreciated. Oh, yeah, for sure. I made a few videos on how I started my channel. Um, essentially, just talk about the stuff you like and you know, be relentless at it. Make a video every single day. Build your own little community. And from there, it's like a snowball and it just grows over time. It's just a lot of time and a lot of work. That's all it is. You can talk about whatever you want. The movies, the comics, the books, 
It's going to be someone that's going to enjoy it. Best of luck, man. Have fun with it. It's a beautiful father-son bonding thing. <clears throat> Was that Mickey that just walked by his window? IG-88's legendary story was a very interesting one, with it ending with IG-88 integrating with Death Star 2's systems to take control of it. What's up, James? What's up, members? Shout out to all the members. Matt Lanter or Hayden Christensen for Star Wars What If? Um, I choose Hayden Christensen. It depends I'm eating on whether Gina. it's animated. Oh, so Mariana, you better come and say hi. What's up, Sean? Have you taken a look at the animated Heir of the Empire by Jar Jar Jargon? I saw some of it. Also, would the four of you come sides making a fan film together? I'm totally open to that if that's what the boys want to do. Yeah. Well, that would work exactly. Good writing us... credit. Budget maybe. Yeah. So we don't do we don't even have to do a budget. We could just do it with like an old school, like when we were kids, just film stuff behind the green screen, send it to each other, and then we compile it, <laughs> edit it, <laughs> wear wigs, change voices. What's up, Benjamin? Remember for thirty four months. You need good world building. Oh wait, he had a comment. Luke became more stoic after the death of his father and his growth as a Jedi. Yep, absolutely. Cool. But you still feel like he would have asked what's going on. Oh, right? def. I feel like he'd be super curious, and he'd just he'd be worried about the, the well-being of everybody. But he'd also be really worried about what all of this means. Rise of the Empire. Right. You need good world building to make characters matter and give the world weight. Um, that's one thing that Disney feels at. But all of it. But I, you I'm liked Andor. To, well. It's hard to give, like, it's hard to say that Disney knows how to do X because they made Andor. But if you're going to say, like, it's a generalized thing, like, technically speaking, just because Ryan Johnson made Last Jedi doesn't mean or do not know how to do it. But, you know, overall, I just think they're in a shambles, generally, because Andor just seemed like, like, you watch it in and among all the other shows they've made. Then you find out how it was made, right? Different team, different guy. And one thing that will stick with me forever is, is Tony Gilroy saying he took time to redraft all the scripts. No one, mm -hmm. no one else did. Not only Star Wars, but they don't take the script seriously at all. Yeah, I agree. Did we show the social media messages that show how, that Pablo Hidalgo posted that he seething loathes you? No, I'm not doing that. I'm not posting anything. What if Luke and Leia never made out? Here's my question. Did Star Wars really need to come back at all? Should George just have taken it with him in his grave to prevent it from damage? I like to be able to celebrate new Star Wars stuff. Going, keep going, going, get characters to buy it by. I suppose if the timeline is either what we have right now mm -hmm. or stop after the prequels, like. Well, I wanted George to make the sequels. He was going to do seven, and then he didn't. What if Qui-Gon didn't cheat Watto out of one perfectly good slave child? <laughs> I what assume if he didn't take Anakin? Would come back. Uh, that's possible. Possibly. Well, I guess Possibly. What does it even look like? If Anakin didn't get with him, I guess Qui-Gon still die. Probably still does, I guess. Um, no, I think things would have changed then in that situation. Um, it's possible, yeah. No, he, he still would have probably died, man. But I think they're in uh, Vader. What was it The Rise and Fall of Darth Vader? No, Dark Lord, The Rise of Vader, that one. He was basically in the Jedi Temple, and he was thinking, okay, what if I didn't leave Tatooine and become a Jedi? Then he would have... He says he would have just been a pro pod racer and never understood the Force, but he would have never known why he was so good at it because he could anticipate all of the moves and everything that he needed to do. So he 
had no idea. He would have no idea that he was so powerful in the force. And he would live a good life. He literally thinks that to himself. How many midichlorians does Kylo Ren have? Probably like 14,000. 10,000. The next step is to make Ahsoka the Force so they can prove that the Force is female. When you meet Theory for the first, gift him a bottle of Bucky. I don't drink. A roll? No. Nah. I mean, are you... Well, you're not going to be there. I mean, I'll have one drink. I have one drink, sure, but I don't typically drink. It'll be a very special occasion. Theory, I want to write my version of the Ray movie for your next fan fiction. It's incredible. Right on. Cool. Don't worry, Theory. You can't be racist towards white people. <laughs> Did you see the dumb petition to kick out Gina from Fan Expo Vancouver? So stupid. There's a petition now. Oh, okay. Well, welcome to Canada. You think Ahsoka is setting up Abeloth as a villain? I don't think so, man. I think it's got to be the father or something. I don't think he's dead. Or the son. I don't think they're dead. They're making an army of zombies. Probably. Clone Wars, Rulers. But there's so many cool stories they, they could do with that. Like, what's that going to happen with Cal Kestis and Marin? They're going to be... There's, they're going to have some... Fighting. Hey Theory, check out the fan film Wingman. You still talk to Josh? Y'all still boys? Still talk to... We don't talk. No. We had our show and he had to go and do his thing, and that was it. How come we never hear about Gareth Edwards doing more Star Wars after the success of Rogue One? Not sure. Well, what, what project will they boot him up? Before he finished. Probably a. For sure. He mentored the director of my first fan film. I made a vid proving it wasn't Taika Waititi that ruined Stormtroopers. It's for Mahler and in good fun. Proving in quotes. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. What do you think of new rock stars? Good breakdowns, in my opinion. Uh, I actually don't like their content. No. In my opinion, I think it's just very scripted. It's very, like... It's just not my style. Uh, yeah, not into it. And he's also made some, uh, let's say more so, shitty tweets towards me when I had my opinion on Andor. So, I mean, that's fine, you know. Have at it, buddy. It's all good. Do you agree with Nerdonymous about how Ryan wasn't at fault for a couple mistakes, especially with the Ryan interviews context we have now? It would I don't know. On, I don't know. Yeah, it would depend on what. I'd have to, I'll try and get them yeah. watched if I can answer. Are they long? Like an hour. Mm. Fan idea. Old Man Windu show directed by Spike Lee. <laughs> Breaking news. Representative Kanye impeached from the Galactic Congress on Coruscant after alleged anti-Semitic comments against the Jedi. More after. My body is stuffed to this stream. You guys are awesome. I'm sorry, you're what? Your body is stuffed to this stream? <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> the fuck? Big couple of it. Don't know if you heard about Godzilla Minus One Theory, but the director of it wants to make a Star Wars movie. I'm, everybody does. Everybody does. I want to make a Star Wars movie. Who would win Darth Vader versus Jean Jacket from Nope? I don't know who that is. Vader would win. No idea who that is. Vader. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about a movie? That tells you everything you need to know about me. What do you think about a movie that explains how the Balkan spies got the plans for the second Death Star? They could show rebels boarding the Death Star while it's under construction to steal plans. Sure. Well, the Balkan spies, right? Maybe that's what he means. If they ever do... It's like stupid autocorrect. If they ever do another Star Wars movie... They have to piss off men fan base. Put a chick in it and make her lame. Love in the grift, says Mo. I have no faith in Lucasfilm. It's like a bunch of sickly vegans have bought my favorite steakhouse and hate me for wanting to have a ribeye. I mean, yeah, that's kind of similar. 
Dr. Grogu would kill everyone. I mean, he choked out Gina Carano. So. Would you agree that Disney sees Star Wars only as a platform to push their political woke agendas rather than a genuine story? Yeah, absolutely. And didn't Bob Iger just say that that's, that was our problem, that we shouldn't have been doing that? Uh, so, you know, it's like, is he going to stick to, yeah, he says a lot of shit, but doesn't do anything yeah. about it. <clears throat> How does it feel now to be counted amongst drinker in that you are now relentless, ruthlessly hated on Reddit? So multiple rage threads, 10k plus upvotes about you guys the last two days. Cool. I didn't big see that. For, uh, big one for Gary recently. People were like, the fact that people watch him means the end. <laughs> they, they fucking take it so far. Hmm. Yeah, I have a real issue with that kind of thinking because it, it what it does, it purports... Um, like a real echo chamber where you can't have anyone else voicing their opinions. And for God's sakes, we're voicing opinions on movies. Yeah. No, it's absurd. Honestly. You know, it's, it's really ridiculous where, like, why, why do you have such a problem with, like, my opinion doesn't invalidate your opinion of the sequel trilogy. You know, I guarantee you if I had two followers, no one would care. Nobody would care. So what? Because I have a subscriber base that I worked for that now I have to shut my mouth and appease everyone? Like, I'm not going to do that. The craziest part right? is when someone who's like been listening to their perspective on our stuff finally is like, Dane. Dane, this is... And they hear like two guys just talking about like... Yeah. Thank you for... They're just sitting there like, where's the... The hyper crazy toxic dance that you're like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Good luck finding it. Yeah, I know it's it's super weird. I I don't really understand it. Um, I would implore anybody that has a problem with me to actually come on the show right now, even and just be like, hey, what's up? Like, anything you want to say on Twitter, you just say it here. And uh, they never do. Nobody does. And it's like. Okay, well, I guess you're just using me for clicks then and views because anytime someone talks about me or you or Drinker or Ryan, they get views about it, you know? But notice we don't do that about other people. We don't create Reddit threads on other people. We just talk about Star Wars or what we like or what we don't like. And Funny I just... Is, uh, often on EFAB, I've encouraged people to have a crew and that you don't have to, there's no sense of, like, stop watching them. Yeah, if you're interested in their work, I don't know. I just don't. I don't understand it. It's like, bro, I I have an opinion on Star Wars. Cool. Like, I, I want it to be great. And that's it. And if you have an issue with that, then that's really something to do with you. Because, man, there's millions and billions of people out there that have different opinions than me about everything. Doesn't mean I have to shut them up. It just means I just don't agree with their opinion. Okay. Udo. <laughs> like, whatever. It is what it is. Texas Diner. What's up, Tommy? Congrats. Your Grogu has evolved into Grogu Sore. <laughs> Would you have loved to see Mando helping a younger, inexperienced bounty hunter who he sees himself in, teaches about the world, and making a bond with? I'm going to unsubscribe if you don't have all four of you guys on for every show. That'd be nice. <laughs> You guys all effing rock. Keep up the good fight, boys. Sorry, I just joined the show late and was having to watch it in super speed mode. All good, man. Yeah, do you guys like the dynamic of the four of us? I feel like they're going to say yes. I want them to say yes. <laughs> the hard truth this Star Wars needs to stop. We need new ideas and a new creative visionary. Kids have no franchise to grow up with today. Not in the same. No. Not at all. I think Vaughn was right. I think there are people at Lucasfilm that agree with us but don't speak up out of fear. To Oh, there are. I have a lot of people that I speak to that work at Lucasfilm. And they're like, you're doing a great job. Like, <laughs> I can't really say anything. Can't talk about you. Can't talk about anything to do with how I actually feel about Star Wars. I just do my work. I show up and that's it. I'm like, yeah. And then there are people that have been there since George was involved. And they have... Watched the literal expulsion of their entire work base and coworkers, and had Disney come in and interject all of their new people, their own people in there, in Lucasfilm. 
and uh, they've seen the purge themselves. So you know, there's tons of it. There's tons of that. They just want to keep their job. Most say Obi-Wan's hilt was lost in episode one, and he made the exact copy in episode two, which he lost again before getting his classic hilt. Dumb. Maybe he recovered his original in episode one after they fight. Dog won't kick. The thing. Not impossible to recover it. He probably just remade it. I just love how Anakin's in episode two is the same shape as uh, Vader, his Vader one. Just skinnier. Since Grogu's species is a mystery, they will have Grogu physically change from a male to a female at age 55 or so, just like some animals do on Earth. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that really helps a lot. I rewatched that fight scene with Daredevil from Echo, and lucky for them, I seen much worse fight scenes or awful choreography in other shows. Appreciate y'all what you do. Echo is the Thanks, bro. Don't need to worry. Mm, no, I don't. Darth Ray has to fight Anakin's clone. Only fix. Hey guys, big fan. If they yeah, but then she'll probably beat him. Big fan. If they do a what if series, how would a what if Grogu turns to the dark side be if Mando gets killed and Grogu slaughters everyone? Yeah, I don't think that would ever happen. Uh, Dark side. Dark side Grogu. I mean, you'd just, just be like Palpatine and Vader. The fact that we're still in the 2016 gender war mentally eight years later is insane. Until we move on, Disney is cooked. Yeah, maybe. KK has been... In, well, yeah, that's the problem. Is that like there's just too much of a focus on gender. And uh, I just, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know. What do you think about it? Why is there so much of a focus on this? Kids. Dressed in some level of like solving problems, social level that I don't know fully exist. I think that there are things to address both sides of society, but the, uh, the female ones of loaded with rest and control, and then I think compensation. It always moves on, um, the eras, and it, I don't know what one we're currently in, where there's a huge pushback to the point where, like I said, I think a South Park episode making fun of them, it's like, oh shit, like, yeah, this has gotten yep. pretty high up now to the point of everybody good shit going on. So I don't know if what you guys now. would like to see the perception from Saudi Khan on why everything now is focused on gender, which has been clipped into oblivion, then go ahead and check out my interview with her, my episode with her on Theory Talks or on my Twitter. And uh, some pretty good insight. KK has been entrenched too long. Removing her will solve little. I say we go aliens on Lucasfilm. It's the only way to be sued. Naboo Fighter detachable trailer for bounties? Possibly. Do an Unforgiven in space with former Sith as a protagonist and a gang gangster as the antagonist. Star Wars is as much Western as it is fantasy. You could replace Unforgiven with any good film. Like, do that, but it's Star Wars. The ultimate problem is do Star Wars. Would be nice. What's up, Michael? What's up, Taylor? Isn't Ahsoka dead in the sequels because one of the voices Ray hears in Rise of Skywalker is hers? Not that it matters because no one will ever really be gone, but still. Yeah, no, so Dave Filoni said that it, he doesn't know. Was it Dave or Ashley? They're like, wait. I don't want her dead yet. <laughs> well, yeah, they're just, they're going to do the world between worlds thing. So she's going to walk by one of the doors and be like, Use the force, yeah, Ray! Like, the writers could just say like, no, that access is all living and dead Jedi. Use the force. Like through one of the doors. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then closes it. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> Can we get a little Mandoa if we're doing the Mando movie, please? Mandoa? Check out Drinker's book series. They're very well written. He has a book series? He does. Cool. What about? Uh, Ryan Drake. 
uh, or, or under the cover of darkness, character who have this get under mysteries, lots of action. That's what his short film is going to be an adaptation. Mm. Cool. Star Wars will flourish with non-profit fan-made projects, not so much with official licensed content. The sad fact is that we are in the wilderness and the Empire took over. We will have to wait. How you doing for time? Um, got me in the position of I hate to leave. I know. We're at 4 p.m. and it's 4.41 p.m. right now. Going. <laughs> well, maybe... We could always do another stream another day and just read them, but, you know, let's keep going. That dude who made the comment about 90% of the movie posters focusing on males is missing the point. Star Wars was meant to be a boy brand. Lucas started it, stated it was made for 12-year-old boys, even though girls like it as well. Um, that was the problem for me. I don't care who's on the front, <laughs> as long as it's like... I don't care. Could be could be a woman. I do, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know? I want to write my version of... Oh, you're sending this twice? Um, it would destroy Disney's. Dude, why don't you write it and record it and upload it? You don't need me. Star Wars Theory seems like the perfect Star Wars fan due to his resting sad face. Ah, okay, resting sad face. Let's get it. You know, when I was a kid, my parents would even say that. I would be like, are you okay? Are you mad? What's wrong? Are you it's just the way my face sits, man. It's just the way my face sits. So, too bad. Do you ever, what, what does your face look like? <laughs> Do I, if I have resting whatever face, I'll just, yeah. I, get, I, get, I mean, it's good to keep uh, in mind if ever I thought you were like in a bad mood. I'll... Yeah, I feel like I need to come with a disclaimer. Like, hey, I look <laughs> like I'm angry or pissed off, but I'm really not. It's just the way my face sits. I don't think I can, unless I got to walk around like this all the time. <laughs> no, I know what you mean, yeah. You know, so. Yeah, like I like during watch parties, I'll be watching. And I like, glance over at chat, and like theory looks fucking bored, man. I'm like, I was actually really enjoying it. What do you mean? It's just like pretty good. What's up, X Wing? Oh man, I missed the whole thing. Playing Sea of Thieves with Jay. Love to see you guys finally relax and breathe. Star Wars fans, man, we were all hurt. Yep. Yep. Enjoy Sea of Thieves, dude. Hope you'll be a MegaCon. You should do a debate with Sheev Talks, Mahler, Ryan, and Marco Kate about the Clone Wars and Star Wars as a whole. Sure. What's up, Jake? That's where the fun begins. Hey, Theory, you got any updates on the Snips zip up? Ordered mine on 25th of August and it hasn't shipped yet. That's very strange. Are you sure you didn't get it refunded? Because everyone has received theirs back in December. Unless you ordered it. That's weird. Can you send me your. Order number? Because there, I don't think there's a single person that didn't receive theirs yet. Unless there was a... Check your email. But yeah, send me... If you can go into the Discord and reach out to Tank Girl and send her your order number and they'll have that figured out for you, man. Imagine if Disney made a series similar to Bucketheads where Stormtroopers doing Stormtrooper things battle and all. But Disney being Disney. Yeah, they're out of touch. They don't get it, man. Glad to see my favorite creators coming together. Recently resubscribed, was heartbroken with Disney's character assassinations, and stepped away from Star Wars entirely for two years. Glad to be back, even though Disney is still messing it all up. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're back, dude. Thanks so much. Thanks for dropping in. What would you think of Abloth being added to canon? Fine. It's just about execution. I would take a 24-7 stream of a Death Star troop just pushing buttons in the Death Star over anything Disney Star Wars. Papa Sergio, so would I. Just push. Beep. Beep. Ewoks are great at riding speeder bikes. Into trees. Jedi Shaggy is Shag... Oh, right, that guy. Oh, yeah, that guy with the freaking goatee. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I got to show you this, dude. Freaking hilarious.
Oh my god. <laughs> Got a few little it does look like chin hairs. I don't know, Scoops. I'll wait to see it. Yeah. Hey Theory, been a subscriber since 2019. Bit of a rough time to be a Star Wars fan, but your content helped me get through, get me into the franchise. I recently finished the Heir to the Empire trilogy. Congratulations, that's awesome. These are your first steps, Ray. Well, I'm glad you subscribed for such a long time now. This is five years. I swear. Jesus. Jedi Shaggy is crushed by Grievous and the... Oh, fuck. You just ruined it for him. Great collab tonight, oh, guys. Okay. But in an ideal world, which other company would you guys want to see own Star Wars? Maybe an independent company. There's no, like, not there's so no corporate. Like a, I don't know if there's any big company that currently going that I'm like, oh, if only they had Star Wars. I know. I know. We're making steam now. We're almost there. Not sure why Palpy thinks Luke will be evil if he kills him. Pretty sure Luke would have still been good after. Uh, it was more about giving no. him to that side of himself, right? Yeah. Self control. And what Yoda said is, once you start down on that path, you know, forever will it dominate your destiny. It's like it, and that was the thing with in the books is it wrote wrote about Anakin's um, journey into that dark side when he killed the Tuscans, and that was like pure evil rage where he just hated them. So once you get that taste, you'll start using that always during fights, and then eventually it just takes you over. It may, t it may take a year. It took a few years. Look what happened to Anakin. It took only three years. You ever considered reading Heart of the Jedi, one of the true OT sequels, as a long as a read along? Each video is a chapter. I'd love to do that, but that's actually illegal. So if I were to do that, um, I have to. Like, I would have to pause and make it my own somehow by, like, talking about chapter or whatever. But it's too much for me to be reading in the sense that they could, they could like, you know, uh, strike me for that. So if I, if I take, like, let's say a few pages and then I talk about it, yeah, that's fine. There's a mission in Lego Skywalker Saga called Once More with Ceiling. Padawan Shaggy is from Clone Wars 03. Grievous kills him. No, oh, you ruined it. I feel that he just mentioned that every time. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. Now this is a good rap mover. I'm gay. I'm an actor. I'm Michael Douglas. Do you know what this means? <laughs> Powerful creation. Means you can't be canceled. Why didn't George Lucas sell Star Wars to Warner Bros? He literally did everything with Warner Bros and 20th Century Fox. I don't understand why he trusted Bob. Because... Bob basically pushed for the Young Indiana Jones show season two when season one tanked, and he had it made. And uh, George always thanked him for that and remembered that. So when it came time to sell, he came to Bob for a, a favor that was done 20 years prior, early 90s. We search and search for answers, but there are none. Colonel Gascon. Show focused on Rick, the door technician. It could work. Just have him be everywhere. Bet his also on Mortis. <laughs> I have a major problem with you, Theory. You're so cute and strong and sexy and buff and beautifully bald and got hella women. I hate you. I, well, thank you. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the Theory Mauler haters have excess estrogen. Probably. Y'all here to brighten my day after the Browns crapped all over my damn weekend. Was that... Baseball? All right. A person said we need to F Nerdrotic and also posted what he thought has. Oh. I don't know if that's literally insane. Buck will kill. Probably kill. I think it might have been kill. They need to fucking come. Sorry, Nerdrotic thought that the newest Marvel thing was bad. Yeah. Let's try to take his life. I mean, the, the worst thing about it is he'll make jokes that he knows will provoke people, and it's fun when they get provoked. But then you get people like this who respond like this. Yeah, let's just take the guy's life because he has a view on movies. Oh, yeah, these are people. If they could press a button to erase him, they would. Mm. Really sad. Well, enjoy jail, I guess, for the rest of your life. Cool. Or the death penalty, wherever you're at. I don't know. That's, yeah, I mean, 
I've gotten my fair share of death threats too, but that just comes with the internet. And look, at this point, I'm like, if if that's how I'm supposed to go, well, then that's how I'm supposed to go. And that's, you know, I'll just be immortalized for like what I stand for. But I, it's the internet, man. I really don't um, buy too much into it at all. Um, people say shit online all the time. But at the end of the day, if that's... If it is your destiny. <laughs> the sequels were amazing! <laughs> oh. I fucking imagine that on a panel. They like, they detonate, like they run up to the panel, and they're like, the sequels Dude. were awesome. <laughs> For the sequels! <laughs> like, fuck, dude. Like, I'm sorry I didn't like the films. Like, I want Star Wars to. I, I wish I loved the sequels. I really do. I. But I fucking don't and it like ruined my childhood characters like what do you fuck you like what do you want be happy you like it yeah <laughs> like what do you care what i think you know i don't know man <laughs> uh your vids and discussions have been great thanks jnm the group of whiny freaks that follow into your comment sections amaze me they're all about topic and tone policing zero substance keep going bro also thanks for the intro to mauler three hour reviews had man well you yeah, know what was you, ones. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I've been following suit on your stuff. So my gym channel called Strength Theory, I've been, <laughs> my fucking vlogs there are like over an hour long. <laughs> yeah, usually vlogs are what, like 20 minutes? So Long is a power that when you start it, you can't escape. Them. You know, I can't, would long dude. Warn people. Yeah, I, I, I love it now. It's great. It's awesome. So... Shout out my gym channel, Strength Theory. Vlogs every day. Going to be going to uh, Venice Beach in a couple days. Go to Gold's Gym. Train where Arnold trained. And uh, I heard it smells like piss there. So be... I've never actually been to Venice Beach. I've been to LA many times. I've never been to Venice Beach. But, so we'll see. I'll, I'll be able to confirm. Who else here likes to make men uncomfortable? Oh, Hell yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Representation isn't the issue in Star Wars. The stories and writing are really bad. Disney making scary. Excuse me. <laughs> Certain ideologies isn't because they care. They just want your money. Oh, they don't care. They use all of us, man. They're using everybody. What do you think is going to turn out to be worse when it comes out? The new Ray trilogy they are making or the next two Avengers films? Tough one. Because the, the Ray, Ray trilogy. trilogy. Is that is that like... like the <laughs> Ray Trilogy. Yeah. Three movies with... The Ray Trilogy. I actually don't know the answer to that question because they're different beasts. Horrible, the two. Trust me, if you knew everything that happened with Marvel, like everyone, the first question you have, of course, is fuck the event. Yeah. Well, I know. I don't know who they are. Oh, did I read this one? I did. What's up, Amelia? Activists create hate threads, echo chambers to advertise the political normies. They're concerned with whose worldview reaches the average person, very aware of how art can be a vehicle to teach people their worldview. Of course, yeah. Well, there's like a good vision of that, you know? Like, there's, there's a lot of, I think the OT for you, a lot of really good morals that can be applied by that. Yeah. Or button topics or anything more broad or right. fundamental yeah i'm totally fine with it i wish we had more films that like put courage bravery and integrity at the, the list of run a good life that's yeah yeah that'd be fantastic i think um there's just a there's it's like a trojan horse you know they're using shows and movies and stuff and they're trying to instill things that really don't belong. I mean, no one's saying don't be inclusive. No one's saying be racist. No one's saying be sexist. <laughs> you imagine? Hey, Theory, I'm making a movie where it's about being racist. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> well, it's like, that's those aren't even, like, no one's saying those are good things, you know, but it's like they're driving a point to kind of make it almost like men are shit. Men are bad. Men are, um, I mean, whenever something is pushed one way so far, it eventually gets pushed the other way, and that's, been proven time and time in history and i just think the most healthy thing would just to be very um 
equal about things and just enjoy movies and shows for the story and to have both male and female protagonists or antagonists and they both help each other. Not one is better than the other because of their gender. There's just a, a cool dynamic between the two that each can do different things just as well. And I think that in turn would make a really cool story where it's not about this divisiveness to divide and conquer kind of thing, which has been like the mandate of all time. So I, I truly feel like if we really want to move forwards as people, we need to stop this division of gender and we need to just judge each other on who we are as people. And then when we come to writing stories, the story, you know, it's, it's, that's it. I don't care if there's a man on the poster or a woman on the poster it, or she's black or white or what Asian, it doesn't matter. Just cool. Make a cool story. That's it. Don't give a shit. We need and or quality writing from people that understand exactly why the original cantina scene makes Star Wars special and or lacked care for lore. Bricks and Screws argument, AK-47s don't belong. Yeah, I know. And, and that's, it's a super weird thing because it's like, that's what I was, the point I was trying to make. It's like, you know, we li we're in a galaxy far, far away and everything that Ralph McQuarrie drew and did was exceptionally unique to space and to a different time that never brought us into this world. Uh, that we're in today. So you would never watch Star Wars and be like, oh, you know, I, I plainly see something that's in this world and take you to like Home Depot or, or Rona or whatever. It's, um, so therein lies, you know, when you have a camera which has like <laughs> fucking Phillips screw heads, like it takes you out of it. And you don't see those as plainly put in sight, zoomed in, in any Star Wars media or project. And so when I made that comment, I'm like, you know, we need to be seeing something that's extremely uh, different than this world, which is what Ralph McQuarrie made a very important point to do in all of his designs. But that went over oh, people's heads because they're weekend Star Wars fans. By that. Like, I feel like just part of the galaxy can be designed in different, different looking than places. But uh, even I was, like, surprised to see it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And if anything, in me, I was more so just like, I wonder how that happened. A different interest in design comes from learn a bit more about how the different parts of the world uh, run different areas. But I don't know. I the thing with Andor is just that like it didn't capture a lot of the Star Wars fan. It's a problem that is annoying, but that they were going to continue. Beyond season two. Well, it's like, why wouldn't you just have a, a blaster that looks like a blaster and on AK-47? Why wouldn't you just have screws that are maybe circular inserts? Something that just doesn't look so, uh, go down to the hardware store kind of thing and grab it, you know? It's such an easy fix. It's supposed to be, a, there, were, there were so many people commenting about it. It's like, literally looks like AK-47. It's like, what the hell is this? And uh, was it supposed to be primitive or was it supposed to, I don't know what it was supposed to portray but yeah there was one comment that came to mind during a live stream and it gets immortalized and people pick no, at I it i understand that super weird super strange john papa sergio says dave and john has all the tools and characters he needs to pretty much make tombstone in space for his movie but 100 percent, they don't have the mind to do it tombstone the movie is a awesome oh really Again, it's kind of like it's the I was saying earlier, it's like, yeah, take any awesome film, and they can just do it in Star Wars if they want. They'll ever action. 1993. Dude, I gotta watch this. Get Russell. Yeah, I'm gonna watch this tonight. Mahler has resting gas mask. <laughs> Darth Banks in Ray film, and we'll use Force Sonic. <laughs> Darth, Darth Banks will save Star Wars. <laughs> Oh, shit. The female market is too big for greedy Disney to pass up. They want all of the fee all of the male audience that they've already had and the female audience, but failed to get either properly. Hmm. What's up, Tommy? It's a pleasure to watch you boys shoot on Star Wars Best Collab since Jimmy Neutron and Timmy Turner. <laughs> Speaking of Jimmy Neutron, I'm actually going to be hanging out with Steve Odekirk when I'm down in L.A. So if you know who that is, he's the creator of Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. And Kung Pao. Please invite Robert M. Burnett. He's cool. Absolutely. Would love to. 
Yo, what's up, guys? What's up, Nick? Wondering what days you're going to MegaCon. Consider going, so maybe I can come say what's up. I'm going to be there Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. What Star Wars character would be the best power lifter? No force allowed. I bet Chewie's deadlift is nuts. Uh, well. Who's Next that? to Jets, that could probably. No, who, who's that dude uh, in the Force Awakens that was sitting in the in Maz's cantina with that girl? I don't know his like, name. But I know you mean. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably that guy. Or Wampa. Yeah, Wampa was like a snow bookie. Paul's got resting bitch face, resting British face. <laughs> Evening theory saying hi from Ireland. We are going to be interviewing John Jackson Miller this month, Kenobi author. Sweet. That's great. Hope you girls are doing well. Yeah, that's awesome. That'll be big. Imagine it was Ahsoka instead of Rey in the sequels. Would have had Kylo versus Ahsoka and Ahsoka seeking Luke. Also her alongside Han Solo and R2. I don't know if she'd be beating the allegations that I'm the most important person in the universe. It's quite possible. It's quite possible. I have an idea. Star Wars should try writing a story for the Rey movie. And what is it? Live stream. Also is Mauler Welsh. Welsh. Bagley got it. Where's Welsh? Where's Wales? And we are. Where's Wales? Just to, the, <laughs> just to the bottom left of England, around. Yeah, you all, all have different stuff. accents, eh? Hey? Oh yeah, all different, different accents. What's like a part of England that I shouldn't go to? Most of it. <laughs> 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 Most people would tell you don't go to London these days. Um, oh, jeez. Okay. I'm not a good guide on where to go in England. So much time there. Is Wales a small part of it? Like, is it a little town? Well, no. We're we're, uh, we're off to the left, like I said. of If you look at Britain and section it out into the individual countries, you'll spot Wales. Oh, nice. I spelt it wrong. Uh, pictures of Wales popping up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's quite old. Quite old town. Oh, yeah. But... Interesting. Sure is. <clears throat> Big 40, hope your week is great, homie. Congrats, Benjamin, on... Well, thank you, I should say, for being a member for 40 months. That's insane. What's up, Brett? He says, back in 99, there was a fan film called George Lucas in Love about George writing Star Wars. It's on YouTube. Kind of goofy, but you'd like it. Oh, check it out. Long is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Hmm, did you? I thought not. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you. Tommy Trips, Disney should sell Marvel and Disney to MTV. They made an animated Spider-Man series with adult topics and follow comic book source material from Stan Lee. MTV? Jeez. I meant sell Star Wars to MTV. I don't know about that, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, hey, babe, I love to make men uncomfortable. Let's take over Star Wars in a woman's eye. Let's somehow destroy this company even more because of women power. Look who created Star Wars. A male. <laughs> Is that a leg? Interesting, interesting emojis after that. It's like a um, man with... The trident and the <laughs> eagles for freedom, I guess, and then an explosion and then a nothing and a leg. Nice. Thanks, Chad Bain. See you tonight on Theory Talks. If BlackRock and Vanguard give money to have a DEI movie made at three hundred million a pop, what movie do you think will get made? The cap we have, the crap we have now. Um. Well, depends on the writers. I guess. Oh, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully That's the thing. The writers right. still have a decent chunk of power with a lot of these projects. Like, of course, they could sneak in good. But it's like Jar Jar. It's like who did do they put in power? You know. It's like yeah. Jar Jar put freaking Palpatine in power. Okay, thanks, Jar. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks, John. Yeah, thanks, dude. That concludes the Super Chats. I know you got to bounce. We did it. We did it. We we completed. We concluded the stream. I hope Wonderful. I didn't miss anyone's. That was an awesome episode. We had over, over 6,300 viewers or something like that. Let me see what the stats are here. <clears throat> 
Uh, how do I check this shit? Uh, concurrent viewers. Yes, yeah, so, dude, we had sixty six hundred over sixty six hundred viewers. And thousand toxic six hundred. Yeah, probably some people looking to clip stuff. We appreciate your views too. <laughs> we appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so next time you see us uh i will be traveling somewhere and i'll be in oh next monday i should probably be in florida by that point but <clears throat> um hey if i see you guys in california cool if i don't i don't and uh then i'll see you guys in megacon which will be dope if you guys are going there once again type m let me see you bon rum's drunk story was hilarious <laughs> uh yeah are you John Favreau? No, what? Don't lie to me. Hey, what happened with Mando? Why'd you fuck everything up, John? Why, <laughs> why'd you fuck up? <laughs> Can I have some change? <laughs> like, it's, like, it's not John Favreau. Can I direct fuck. the next Star Wars? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck. Guys, it's John Favreau. Let's fuck him up. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, where's Megacon? It's in Orlando. Yeah, February 1 to 4. So I'll see you guys there. Uh, we'll see you next week as well. Love you all. Leave a like on the stream. Check out Theory Sabers. We're going to be dropping the new saber in just a couple of days here. Uh, the first one's going to be starting at 175 bucks. Going to be offering two different designs. And I hope you guys will enjoy it. All the money goes back to Vader Episode 2. In fact, I just got an invoice right now from one of the artists. So thanks, guys, for dropping in. See you on Mahler's channel. See you on my channel. All the best. May the force be with you. Bye. And you're sounding like a separatist.